Welcome to This Day in Baseball and our Daily Rewind. My name's Tom Hannon, and I'm your host. Today, we have a special treat for you. We are bringing you the actual radio broadcast from the July 10th, 1934 All-Star Game at the Polo Grounds. You will listen to the dazzling performance of Carl Hubble, who fans five straight future Hall of Famers named Ruth, Garrick, Garrick Fox, Simmons, and Cronin. I'm going to let you listen to the game, but before I do, I have a trivia question for you. Can you tell me what batter has been used the most as a pinch hitter in All-Star Game history? And for a special bonus, how many times? Now enjoy the game, and I'll have the answer at the end. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. Today we're out at the Polo Ground, that historic old home of the New York Giants. Nestled in the lee of Coogan's Bluff on the island of Manhattan. The occasion, of course, is the playing of the second annual All-Star Baseball game between the outstanding performers of the National and the American League. And boy, what an aggregation of ball tossers are wandering around there, down there on that field right now. The pick of the world, no question about that. The crowd is tremendous, the stands are packed all the way around. If you don't know the polo ground, I'll just tell you uh, quickly that it is a double-decked affair uh, running about four, uh, four-fifths to five-sixths of the way around the entire enclosure. There are, oh, there's only a small part of the grounds out in uh, center field which is devoted to the bleachers. The rest is all double-decked grandstand. The grass looks as though it were uh, uh, absolutely as fine as the finest uh, type of uh, golf course green. Of, uh, golf course green. It's perfect out there today, and Henry Fabian has certainly done a great job. Every seat in the house is filled now, almost at least. I can't see any vacant seats any place from my place up here in the in the second tier uh, off third base. Uh, the, it's just about a capacity crowd right now, and undoubtedly every inch of the standing room will be taken before game time, which is in just a little less than 15 minutes. The boys have, have drawn an absolutely perfect day for baseball. It's not too hot, but it's plenty hot enough to get a good sweat up when you're working out there on the field, but not too hot and uh, to be un- not hot enough to be uncomfortable for the spectators, the customers. So it's just perfect all the way around. There's a slight breeze blowing, but not enough to affect fly balls in particular. You know, last year, the first of these all-star games was played out at Comiskey Field in Chicago. And that ended with a victory for the younger league, the Americans, the final score being four to nothing. That day, a young fellow who had his 20th birthday in big league baseball only the day before yesterday and who intends to quit as a regular at the end of this season. He broke up that ball game with a towering home run with a man on the pad. His name, as you all know, is Babe Ruth, or George Herman Ruth, as you will. And for years, his specialty has been breaking up ball games. This is another year, however, and the National League is out to avenge that beating of 1933. The way that ball has been zipped around the bases so far, the dazzling infield plays both teams have been pulling off, and the great running catches of long flies the outfielders have been snagging, it seems that a man must just be a magician to slap out a safe hit. But on the other hand, when you take a look at that, those batting averages of the two murderers rows, you must realize that they'll just snap into it one time or another and do the necessary to score some runs. Crowd. Leading off for the American League will be Charlie Geringer, who is second basing and 382 batting average has been one of the big reasons why the Detroit Tigers have been such thorns in the sides of the America of the New York Yankees all season. Crawling right along all the time. They've been on top uh, once in a while, but the Yanks have managed to across the 4th of July, which is supposed to be the old deadline, uh, across the 4th of July in the lead. The national batting order starts off with Frankie Frick, the old Fordham flag, manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. By the way, as we run along, those of you who want to take these names down, be sure to have your pencil and paper, and you can get them, and then I'll run over the batting order again a little uh, uh, when we finish. Uh, Frankie Frick, the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals and the captain of all-star nationals today, He's been camping around second base so long that that position has given up all its secrets to him. And his punch this year is at a 310 clip. Heine Manush of the Washington Americans is second on the American batting order, and he'll be out there patrolling the left field garden. And he's, he's the only man uh, posting a 400 batting average 
His average is 402, by the way. He'll look awful tough to those opposing pitchers. My trainer. My trainer. Uh, a third baseman to conjure by. He's the new pirate manager, you know. And he'll take care of the hot corner for the Nationals. And if he can't do it, well, then just nobody can. That's all. He's hitting at a 352 clip. And he surely will play up to the great standards that he's set for years out there in Pittsburgh. Dave Ruth will be at his old right field stand for the Americans. The man with the all-time record of 699 home runs in his major league career and who probably has been given more intentional passes than any other man uh, ever in baseball. For the babe, his batting average is very puny this year, 291. The Nationals' number three man is Joe Medley, who with the Dean brothers and Frankie Frisch is largely responsible for keeping the Cardinals up near the top. He's hitting 361. The American League has chosen Lou Gehrig, Columbia Lou of the Yankees to fill the cleanup position, and Kai Kyler of the Cubs gets the call from the Nationals. Gary on first is such an old institution that little need be said of him. He's baseball's Iron Man, and he's well in the running for both batting and home run leadership in his league. He's batting 369 at present. Kai Kyler is a right field ball hawk, and he sports a willow wielding average of 343 at present. Next for the Americans is Jimmy Fox. We had thought he would not be playing, but he's going to play according to the official lineup. Of course, Jimmy is a great star and home run hitter for Connie Mack down in Philadelphia. And he, he, he whose first basing is just too well known to uh, need any talking about. Fox is uh, massaging the pellet at a 345 clip. He's playing third today for the Americans. Wally Berger, the Boston Braves center fielder, is a real ball hawk. One who, was, who gladdens the heart of Bill McKechnie, his manager, and one of the principal reasons why the Braves are always a menace. He's hitting his 316. Al Simmons of the White Sox in Chicago comes next in the American batting order. He'll, he'll do the center fielding. A fast, utterly graceful fly chaser and always dangerous at the plate. How many of us who were there will ever forget that athletic rally of 10 runs against the Cubs in the World Series several years ago? A rally started by Simmons' ringing home run against the left field stand. He batted twice in that inning. He's singing the ball for a 343 standing. Then we have Bill Terry on the Nationals. Memphis Bill, the manager and first backer of the Nationals. He, play, he places himself sixth in the batting order in spite of a fine average of 368, highest of the national team regulars. As everyone knows, he's also manager of the world champion New York Giants. And he's out in front now in quest of his second pennant and, of course, his second World Series. Joe Cronin of the Americans is not only manager of the team, but also manager of last year's American League champions, the Senators of Washington. Joe's pitching has fallen down on him a bit this year, but if those hurlers begin to click as they should, his team may be right up there yet. Joe will be in there doing a lot of short stopping, and he's much more dangerous at the plate than his 283 average might indicate in this group of terrific super sluggers. Travis Jackson, Jackson of the Giants. He bats seventh for the Nationals. He's long been called the greatest shortstop in baseball, a player who seemed to be all washed up last winter on account of trouble with his legs. But trouble just doesn't mean a thing to Jackson, and he's in there with his whipcord arm tossing runners out from any and all positions and holding up his end with the bat with an average of 287. He's one of the most opportune hitters in the game today. Behind the bat, the Americans have Bill Dickey of the Yankees, and the Nationals have Gabby Hartnett of the Cubs, both powerful bulwarks for their team, both possessing fine arms to intimidate poten potential base dealers, and both have certainly, that, that's certain something that helps them steady pitchers at critical moments. Dickey is batting 322 right now, with Hartnett just exactly the same, so there's nothing to choose there. The backstopping will be well taken care of. Two of the truly great pitchers of today will oppose each other in the starting lineup, probably for three innings each. Senor Lefty Gomez of the Yankees and Carl Hubble of the Giants. If these two are the starters, and I'm sure they will be now, uh, there should be a southpaw battle for three innings at least. That'll be worth traveling mighty far to see. Gomez has already won 14 games for the Yanks, and Hubble has a rating among many who should know as the greatest living pitcher, and by not a few, as a man who is coming along to take his place as the greatest of all time. 
Man, also look at those batting orders. Not a soft spot from top, top to bottom. They're tough. Not the slightest chance for a pitching let up. Just groove one for any man in that lot. And bang, there goes your old ball game. Will it be pitchers or will it be hitters? A difference of opinion, eh? Well, that's what makes horse racing. Aside from the players mentioned, the Americans have, as pitchers, Red Ruffing of the Yanks, Tom Bridges of the Tigers, Mel Harder of the Indians. Tom, how's Mel going? Pretty good? Great, Tom Manning of Cleveland ought to know all about him. Jack Russell of the Senators. Infielders, Frank Higgins of the Athletics, Jimmy Dykes of the White Sox. Outfielders, Earl Averill of the Indians, Ben Chapman of the Yanks, and Sammy West to the Browns. Of course, Tom Manning thinks that both Mel Harder and Earl Averill should be right in there now in the beginning of the game. But they're not. We'll probably see them all later. Uh, catching, uh, Rick Farrell of the Red Sox. I'm talking about uh, extra players now, you know. The Nationals have as pitchers Lon Warnicke. That great stop for the Cubs. Dizzy Dean, who with his brother is keeping the cards right up near the top. Van Mungo. From the Dodgers. And over in Brooklyn, they think Van Mungo is the greatest pitcher in either league. And they're not sure he is. With a lowly team uh, this year, unfortunately, for the Dodgers, Van Mungo has been pitching great ball. Then they also have Fred Frankhaus of the Braves. It seems to be the general opinion around, among those who might know something about it, that the National League pitching uh, will top the American League pitching today to some extent. But pretty soon we'll know all about it. As extra infielders in the national Nationals, Pepper Martin of the Cards. He's that baby that went crazy in just about one of World Series all by himself a few years ago, three years ago, 31. Floyd Vaughn of the Pirates. It was, uh, we had thought that Floyd might go in playing shortstop right away as, uh, as uh, uh, Jackson has had some eye trouble, but Jackson will start. Billy Herman of the Cubs. Outfielders for the Nationals, extra men, Paul Wainer of the Pirates. Mel Ott of the Giants and Chuck Klein of the Cubs. Just think of a baseball team that keeps Paul Wainer, Mel Ott, and Chick Klein on the base. Boy, oh boy. Also, the ex- an extra special, Al Lopez of the Dodgers. The umpiring done done today will be by Brick Owen and George Moriarty from the American League. And Charlie Berman and Dolly Stark of the National League. Beside its manager, Joe Cronin, the American team will have the services of Walter Johnson, the old master pitcher from Washington, you know. Walter Johnson will be on the coaching line, and Al Shack will also be on the line for the American League. And the National League team will be similarly served by manager Bill McKechnie and manager Casey Stengel. Casey Stengel, you know, I remember one day out here when Casey Stengel slapped out two home runs in the World Series, won a ball game for the Giants. What a day that was for old Casey. No doubt about that. Anyway, all together, it looks as though a grand and glorious baseball game was going to begin very, very soon. The managers of the team, the captains of the teams, and the four umpires have gathered around the whole place uh, for a last-minute conference before this ball game starts. I don't think there's a seat in the house. That means there must be somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 to 60,000 people crammed in the polo grounds this afternoon on one of the most beautiful baseball days you ever saw in your life. Uh, both Gomez and Hubble are down there left, left-handing them into their catchers uh, on the sidelines, getting warmed up for the game. And uh, as... I, I want you all to know that in a few moments we'll turn the microphone over to Tom Manning of Cleveland. Tom, you know, is, uh, has been telling you about World Series since time immemorial, and uh, he's also going to give us play-by-play uh, scoring today. Tommy Manning, that carrot-top redhead from Cleveland, Ohio. Here, quit that, Tom. And uh, also with us is Ford Bond. Ford, Ford, Ford Bond has been telling you all about the baseball scores daily through this season. And he's been making a fine baseball game uh, out of the news results following the game. Ford has been telling you about every game. They haven't missed a game yet, have you, Ford? No, he says he hasn't missed a game. 
Of course, if he falls out of this box, he might miss tomorrow's game, but uh, he will we'll try to keep him in. The field has been cleared now. The boys are still standing around uh, the home plate. Uh, Joe Cronin and uh, Bill Terry. And I uh, see Walter Johnson is there, too. And uh, I believe... I, I don't know whether it's going to be before the game or not, but I believe it will. It will be. The unveiling of the tablet for John McGraw. John McGraw, the little Napoleon, as he was called, for many years. Yes, the drapes have been pulled back from the tablet commemorating the history of John McGraw and the giant. It's out in center field. The, the tablet to McGraw is located just above the tomb. Or oh, not the tomb, it isn't exactly a tomb, but the stone plaque out in center field at the center field exit, which was erected some years ago for that war boy, Captain Eddie Grant, formerly of the Giants. Uh, just above, just above the, the uh, memorial to Eddie Grant uh, is a plaque to Chrissy Masterson, who many people say, many of the old enthusiasts claim, was absolutely the greatest pitcher of all time. Ross Young also is in memory out there with another plaque next to Christy Matthewson. Ross Young, you know, was that uh, great outfielder of the New York Giants some years ago, and the Giants and the world lost him. Eddie Grant, Christy Matthewson, and Ross Young, and now above all of these is placed the bronze plaque in memory of John McGraw, one of the greatest leaders of baseball men who ever lived, unquestionably, and one of the real old-timers. He and Connie Mack were the, up to a short time ago, were the only two of the real old-timers left, and now we have but one, Connie Mack, who I believe is now in his 72nd year. I believe Connie is that old, but to know Connie, you would never think he was that old. And it says, uh, it was a terrific blow to baseball, of course, to lose John McGraw, but he felt that he was not in good health. He resigned from his managership of the New York Giants, and they were his greatest love all his life. He had, and it wasn't very long before it seemed that the body simply could not hold the soul any longer when after he had lost his beloved Giants, and so he passed from us. Now this ball game is going to start in just a very few moments. And I think Tommy Manning would like to warm himself up here talking for a few moments before this baseball game commences. Tommy Manning will uh, tell you first about the play-by-play the play -play through the entire game. Between innings, we'll, Ford Bond will talk to us and uh, give us some of the high spots inning by inning. After the game, it'll be my pleasure to come back again on the microphone and talk about the game to some extent. Not too long, I hope. And uh, now this is Graham McNamee speaking. The National League is uh, the, the National Broadcasting Company. The National Broadcasting Company is sending you the details of this game. And here's Red Tom Manning. Come in, Tom. Good afternoon, everybody. As Graham has told you, it is really a great day here at the Polo Grounds in New York, and what a ball game we all anticipate. Before we get started this afternoon, I want you to know that Ford Bond is going to speak to you throughout the game, and if you don't mind, as William McNamee, of course, has given all of us so many fine thrills uh, during his broadcasting career. We're mighty happy to tell you today, and to congratulate William McNamee, today is his birthday. Is that right, Ford? That's right. That's right, Graham celebrating a birthday and showing all of his presents and claiming, what is it, 26 or 24 that he was asking about a while ago. Well, the players are all walking out now to have their pictures taken together with a few of the umpires. The National Leaguers have come out. Today, the National League are wearing their home uniforms. But, of course, each one of them decorated with their individual insignia of the teams. You see the Cardinals and the Pirates and the Giants, all of them down there. Just for a moment, while we have time, we're going to check through this batting order so that you'll have it firmly in your mind or on your sheet if you're following and keeping scores of the play-by-play -play account which will be given you by Tom Manning. We'll check through the American batting order here for the moment. Geringer will lead off. Geringer, the second baseman on the American lineup today. 
This will be followed by Manu. And the crowd rings out with applause for that National League crowd as they stand out. They're all having the picture taken, almost as many ball players as there are photographers, but I think the photographers outnumber them. Manish is second, then Ruth, third in the lineup, which is his usual place in the Yankees' batting order, followed by that thundering artilleryman who bombards almost every park that he gets into, 24 home runs so far this season, Lou Gehrig. First four, Gehringer, Manish, Ruth, and Gehrig. Then fifth in the batting order and wearing the number five today is Fox, manning third base here in the starting lineup. Followed by that crashing center fielder, Simmons. Simmons is sixth and also wearing that number. Then Cronin, placing himself seventh in the batting order. He occupies fourth in the senator's batting order of his home team. He's managing this club today, this American League club, and he's placed himself seventh in the batting order. Bill Dickey, the catcher, occupying the eighth place, and Gomez, the starting pitcher, the ninth. Now the players are broken up down there for the moment and are running out to their position. So we'll go through the National League batting order right quickly here. Frisch, leadoff man and second baseman of the National League team today. Trainer, third baseman and occupying the second place in the batting order. Medwick, followed by Kyler, Kai Kai Kyler, the right fielder. Then Berger. Perry, Jackson next, who is playing short. We thought that Vaughn might start, but Jackson's been chosen to start. Hartnett, Yabby Hartnett, the Cubs catch catcher, who is starting off as catcher for the National League, is down there now. He's put on his protector and his shin guards, and Hubble walks out and picks up a ball on the mound. And Hubble occupying the ninth position in the batting order. He's warming up now, tossing over a few to Gabby Hartnett, who wings it back. And the infielders are tossing the ball around. It goes over to Bill Terry. He wings it across on the ground over to Pat Trainer on third. Getting just about ready, and Geringer, the second baseman and leadoff man for the American League team, is up there now measuring his map and feeling of it. And here's Tom Manning to give you the start of this great game, the all-stars of the American and National League with the American League up at bat with Geringer up at the plate. And here's Tom Manning. Well, it's just about set to go now. Thurman is behind the plate umpiring. Thurman of the National League, you know. George Moriarty of the American League is at third. Rick Owen is at first. And Dolly Stark is at second base. Dolly Gehring has stepped into the batter spot. Here's the windup. The great Paul Hubble and the first ball pitch. It's a foul down first base. Strike one. The ball is received over there by Robert Johnson, manager of the Cleveland Indians. And was delayed for a moment. The ball got away from Walter and... Bill Perry, manager and first baseman of today's game, finally receives the ball and crosses it back to the National League dugout. Now ready to go again. Getting her up, you know, spikes one. Ball, it's a fastball. Missed the outside corner of the plate, just a little bit too high. That one was not quite as fast as the first ball that Hubble tossed in there. Or the ball one and strike one on Charlie Gellinger, you know, that great second baseman of the Detroit Tigers. Here it is, ball two, another hook ball, this is the outside corner of the plate, Hubble stood there, bending down for a moment, looking in, that is the ball, and the count on Charlie Gellinger, ball two, and strike one, here it is, he swings, it's a base hit, Frankie Frick drives for the ball, it's out in the center field, it's Hubble Gellinger's rounding first, going to second, it's close to goal, he's safe. Manu, 
the second man up in the first inning. Ball one and strike one. Sally carrying us on second base. Nobody out. The pitch. It's a ball. Tiny Menon taking almost a half swing. Gabby Hartman turned around, pointed his finger to the umpire with the ball in his hand. But the umpire had called it a ball. So the count on Tiny Menon. A left hand hitter is ball two and strike one. Here's the pitch. He swings, he misses. Strike two. Tiny Menon quit taking a long cut at that one. Undoubtedly, he has his eye on that right field. Please you here at the ball of ground, which is 294 feet from home plate and about 15 feet high. The count on Manu, ball two, strike two, nobody out, carrying around second. Here it is, double pitching, ball three. A hook ball was just a little bit low on the outside. And now the count on Heine Manu, ball three and strike two. It's the first inning of this all-star ball game at the Polo Grounds in New York. The National Broadcasting Company sending you the description. Nobody else. Gehring around second. Heine Manu with a count ball three, strike two. Something's got to happen. Here it is. It's a ball. A ball that was over the plate but just a little bit low. And Heine Manu walked. Now we have Heine on first, Charlie Gehring around second, and the mighty Stuntsman clap. Listen to that cheer for Babe Ruth. Just at the moment, manager Bill Perry, Frankie Frisch, Travis Jackson, High Trainer are all in there around Paul Hubble, and they're having, as Bill Mundy would say, a clap shut it. Huddle. And by the way, Bill Bundy uh, is here with us in the box today, and a little later on, we're going to have Bill come over and say hello to you. I know you'll all be anxious to hear him. All players may come and they may go, but here is the king of them all in the batter's box, pulling that old bat up and down, he knocks the dust off his shoes, and he's ready to face the great Paul Hubble. The pitch hits a strike over the heart of the plate, a ball strike on Babe Ruth. It's the first inning, you know. Nobody out. Tiny Manoush is on first. Put his over the base on ball. Charlie Geringer is on second base. Here's the pitch. Ball is outside. Ball one and strike one. Fans are all yelling the American League. Fans of sports. The crowd is split here. And the American League fans of sports are pulling for base to park one of the bleachers. One and one the pitch. He swings. He misses. It's a strike. Babe Ruth swung the way back on that one. He was aiming for it someplace over in Coogan's Bluff. I don't know, but he was virtually swinging from way back. Strike two and ball one is the count. Tiny Manoush is on first. Charlie Geringer is on second. Nobody is out. Paul Hubble, the great National League southpaw, the Giants is in the box. Here it is. Strike three! Strike three! He's out! Gary, it's too low. Ball three. 
Brad Hudson, Carl Hubble, is working awfully hard out there. And well, he should with this array of sluggers coming up. Jimmy Fox is hanging around home plate. You've all heard, of course, of Jimmy Fox. Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox following in a row. Murderous row, and make no mistake about it. Three and one is the count, and here's the pitch. It's a strike, a fastball, right down the old alley. Gary has elected to work out his string with Carl Hubble, and now the count is ball three and strike two. It is very possible now that Gary around second, Man who's on first, will be off with the pitcher's motion. However, we have but one out. We shall see the attack of Bill Coleman on this next play. Three and two, you know. Man who's has a big lead off first. There they go, they're running. Gary swings, he misses, he strikes out. But the double steal. Was attempted, and Gary is headed in just ahead of the ball, and it's safe. Mike Trainer, the third baseman for the National League, is now arguing with umpire George for reality. That was very, very close to Gary Swung, and missed the third strike, and with the runners off with the pitcher's motion, you know the count was three and two, and they were off, and Sally Geringer stood in just the head of that throw. It was very, very close, but George Moriarty of the American League had his throw right over that play at third base and declared Charlie Geringer safe. It's a stolen base for Geringer and a stolen base for Heine Menu. Manager Bill Curry, Travis Jackson, and several of the other boys now have walked over as far as the pitcher's box, but the argument at third base is over. They are now planning the attack on Jimmy Fox, one of the greatest right-hand hitters of all time. Well, we have a moment. Let us see the picture again. It is the first inning of this all-star ball game in the polo grounds of New York City. Charlie Geringer is on third base. Heine Manu of the Washington Senators is on second. We have two men out, and that mighty hitter of Connie Mack, Philadelphia Athletic, is now at the plate. Carl Hubble is winding up. Here's the pitch to Fox. He swings, he misses. Right one. Boy, how this Hubble is burning him across the plate. Pitching his old heart out out there for the cause of the National League. Striking out with those two great hitters, Babe Ruth and Lou Gary. Two men out, runners on second and third. Fox is up. Right the pitch. Ball one. That was a curveball. That missed the inside, and the count is ball one and strike one on Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Fox is playing third base for the American Leaguers this afternoon. Here's the windup again. Ball one, strike one. It's a foul. Foul up over the stands in the back, and the count on Jimmy Fox is strike two. Gabby Hartnett gets a new ball from umpire Furban and whips it down to play Trainer at third. Trainer takes his club off, rubs it up a little, and then runs halfway over to the pitcher's box where he tosses it to Carl Hubble. Boy, what pitching this Hubble is doing out there. The first two men on, up got on, and then he struck out. Ruth and Gary. And here's the pitch. Strike two with ball one. Ball two. Ball two. It was high outside, and the count on Jimmy Fox is strike two and ball two. No score is yet in the first half of the first inning. Two men out. Geringer is on third. Manus is on second. And Fox is up. Two and two. And here it is. The pitch. He swings. He's out. He's out. He's struck out. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. He's struck out. Three strikeouts for Carl Hubble. Come in for it, Ron. A ball player's dream. Yes, sir, a manager's dream. And a pitcher's nightmare. That's what this is. When you face these murderers' rows that come up here to bat. And what an achievement that was of Carl Hubble back here in this first inning. Here is a resume of what happened, just to go over it briefly. The American League first inning, Carringer leading off, the count goes to 2 and 1, and he snaps a sharp single to center field, going into second base on Berger's error in center field, and he slid hot into second there with Frick receiving the throw, and the umpire called him safe. Single and an extra base on Berger's error. Then Manners comes up. And it goes to three and two, and then the next one sails over. Is a ball, and Manners walks, and the two men on base, and, and nobody out. And then into that big conference there in the infield with Bill Terry coming over to find out how you start pitcher Carl Hubble. What's going to do with two men on, and then these two murderers coming up, Dave Ruth and Gehrig. Well, Ruth steps up there. The count went to one and one ball and two strikes. And then the babe standing there looking at one, and it comes over, and the umpire's hand goes up in the air, and the man is out. Yes, sir. Babe called out on sight. Gary comes up, and he goes out swinging, and Gehringer and Manush go down to second and third, to third and second, respectively. Then Jimmy Fox comes up and strikes out 
a great achievement, Carl Hubble. Here we go into the second half of the first inning. Tom Manning. Frankie Birch is up. Second baseman, you know, manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. Frankie Batsum, right-handed. Lefty Gomez is in the box for the American Leaguers. Frankie gets a home run. It's going, going, going. It's high up into the bleachers for a home run. A home run for Frankie Birch. Listen to that crowd. Comes up with it, tosses to Gary, and high 
Tyler is out at first. That retires the National League into the first inning. Have one run on one hit. At the end of the first inning, the National Leaguers won, American Leaguers nothing. Come in for it. And what a thrill rang through these stands when Frankie Frisch stepped up to that plate. A ball shot over, and it was called a ball. Then he settled himself, gave a hitch to his pants, wiped his hands on the dirt, picked up that bat, leaned over the plate, and looked at the next delivery that Gomez shot in, and wanged it high, hard, and far into the upper deck of the right field stand for a thrilling over. And how that does lift the fans out of their seats. A thrill when that ball leaves with the crack of the bat and smashes straight and direct for those upper right field fans. So a run came in, and Gomez settled down. Trainer, the second man in the National League batting order, who came up to count. Wayne smashes down to second base. Here is the over, threw it up fast, got it to Gary, over on first, and he was out. One out. National Leaguer's first inning. Then Medwick. Medwick came to bat. Struck out. Tyler came up. Shot it down the corner. He's out corner to Gehrig. And here we go with Simmons up at bat, I believe, in the second inning. And Tom Manning coming in to give it to you. Carl Hubble the southpaw. The Giants is in the box again. Al Simmons, the right-hand hitter, is up the pitch. Ball one. A fast ball was high on the outside. As we went to the first half of the second inning, the National Leaguers are out in front by the score of one to nothing. Al Simmons leads off for the Americans. In the second inning, he swings and misses a mighty swing, turning all the way around. That's a beautiful pivot to know that Simmons has. Takes his pose in the dirt, swings all around, and the count is ball one and strike one. Manager Joe Cronin is hanging around home plate. Coming up next, the pitch, strike two. There was that old screw ball, came in there shoulder high, and then dove down, and Simmons swung, Simmons swung over it, and the count is strike two and ball one. First man up for the American Leaguers in the second inning. Here's the pitch. He's out. He's swinging. Strike out. One goal. That was a change of pace off in the call. Hubble had in there, letter high. Simmons took a good toe hold and swung. Boy, that constitutes some sort of a record. May Blue, Blue Jerry, Jimmy Fox, and Al Simmons all striking out in succession. Boys and girls, this boy Hubble is a pitcher. Joe Cannon is up there. He gets them right-handed, you know. The first is a foul up and back. Up on top of the press box, and the count on Joe Cannon is strike one. Beerman crosses out another new ball. Gabby Hartman puts it down to Bill Carey at first. Carey rubs it off a little bit and then crosses it over to Carl Hubble. First half of the second inning. One to nothing in favor of the National Leaguers. One man out and nobody is on. Here's the pitch to Cronin. Strike two, swinging. That old blue ball of Carl Hubble's is working in there beautifully this afternoon. It must be when you strike out four hitters like that. Jerry Cox and Simmons. Now he has the count two and nothing on Joe Coleman. One man out, nobody on the pitch. It's too high. Ball one. That was just about the fastest ball that Hubble has passed in there this afternoon with a count two and nothing. He's a smart pitcher, you know. He's whipped that fast one in there. Here's the pitch again. Two. Good one. Ball that Bill Dickey pulled away from. 
and it broke over the part of the plate for a tall strike. And the count now is strike two, ball one. The American League is batting in the second inning. Two out, nobody on. Here's the pitch, strike two and ball one. He bangs it, it's a base hit into left field. A base hit into left field, the ball is received by Medwick. He tosses it into Travis Jackson at second base, and Dickey stops at first. That's the second hit of the afternoon for the American Leaguers. And now, Lefty Gomez, who is in the box for the American Leaguers, comes to the plate. The score, the National League is one, the American League is nothing. It's the first half of the second inning. Two men have been retired, and Bill Dickey is on first. Gomez swings and throws that all the way down to Bill Perry at first base. Bill Perry picks the bat up and is walking all the way into home plate. He doesn't throw it back, but he's walking all the way into home plate. And very gentlemanly sends the bat to Lefty Gomez and makes some kind of comment. Yes, sir. Bill Perry picks that bat up right from his position at first base and walks all the way into the batter's box and handed it to Lefty Gomez. Strike one is the count. Two out. Dickey on first. The pitch. Strike two. He swings. That was a long follow through. Very beautiful golf swing that the Gomez had on display that time. Strike two is the count, you know. Two men out, and Bill Dickey is on first. Charlie Gallagher hanging around home plate. Here's the pitch. Strike three, swinging. That's the Gomez, the pitcher of the American League. Struck out, making the six strikeout for the power level of the National League. It's all one to nothing. The American League half of the second inning started off with Simmons up. And of course the fans hanging on to the edge of their seats with Simmons at bat after Hubble had struck out Ruth and Gehrig in the first inning. So Simmons came up, the count went to one ball and two strikes, one and two on him. And then he swung hard and collected an awful lot of air on the end of his bat. The fourth strike up for Hubble. Then Joe Conan came up. The count went at one the count went at one and two on him, and he whipped. With a vicious cut at that ball, missing it, mixing the fifth man. Then Bill Dickey came up. Sure fire hitter Bill Dickey, a great catcher, and the American League catcher this afternoon. And he wanged a nice little Texas leaguer out into left field, just over the shortstop head and not far enough up for Medwick to do anything about it out in left field for a single. Gomez came to bat. Gomez, who's had that contest on with Jimmy Johnny Broca of the Yankees to see who could get it. The most hit this season. So far, Gomez had five, and he struck out three straight. So here we go into the National League half the second inning, and here's Tom Manning to give it to you. Wally Berger, right hand hitter, his first up. He swings at the first ball, six minutes to foul, up and back, strike one. Lefty Gomez, you know, is in the box for the American Leaguers with Bill Dickey behind the bat. We have a moment. Those who just tuned in, Gallagher's at first, Gallagher at second, Tolman at short, and Jimmy Fox to be at running at third. The outfielders, Ruth, Simmons, and Manu. Back two, swinging. Wally Berger, you know, is one of the long-distance hitters of the National League. Well, as far as that's concerned, everybody out here is a long-distance hitter today. Berger's the first man up for the National Leaguers in the last half of the second. The pitch, a long smash is high in left field. A long smash is high over the pavilion in left field, and the here's strike two on Wally Berger. Scores one to nothing in all in favor of the National Leaguers. The result of Frankie Fish's home run. Frankie Fish was the first man up for the National Leaguers in the first inning. Parked it in the upper deck of the right field stands for a homer. Six, three, Wally Berger, strike out swing. That's the second strike out of the afternoon. Bill Perry is coming up. Bill gets a great ovation from the crowd as he steps to the plate. Bill is well liked here. In New York City, and he should be. Bill is a great ball player. Bill is the manager of the National League today. He's a left-hand hitter. The first pitch, by one, a fast ball is outside. Travis Jackson, shortstop and captain of the Giants, is next. There's a long smash in the center field, but Simmons coming in. Simmons is under it. He has it. Very, very high fly center field. Al Simmons, you know, is usually found at left field for the Chicago White Sox. The 
Go from center field this afternoon with Heidi Meadows playing left. Travis Jackson, shortstop of the Giants, a right hand hitter, is next up. They said last one of the Jackson is all washed up on account of a bad knee, but that knee is plenty sound this year, and he's playing a whale of a game. Spike, swinging. That was a fast ball just under the chin, but Jackson took a great cut at it. Two out, and nobody on. Spike, two, ball. That was a nice curveball, better high. Ball bounded out of Dickie's glove, rolled two feet toward third. Bill retrieves it and tossed it back to Gomez, and we're ready to go. Two out, nobody on, Jackson up, strike two. One to nothing in favor of the National League. Here's the pitch. Gomez takes an extra long wind up this time, and here it is. It's a ball, it's over the plate, but just a little bit low, and the count on Travis Jackson is strike two, and ball one. Two out. Nobody on. And here comes. Strike three. Swinging. That was a slow cut that Jackson took at that. That's all for the National League in the second inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Ford bomb. Looks like this game is going to settle the argument about which it takes to win ball games, heavy hitters or great pitchers, because the pitchers are tying these heavy hitting lineups in the knot this afternoon. The National League second inning, Gomez. First pitching to Berger. Berger came up and went down on three straight balls, all of them strikes. And he swung hard at the third one and tore through a lot of the ozone above the plate and got exactly nothing at all. Then Bill Terry came up to the cheers of the fans, a very popular player, great first baseman and great manager of the New York Giants, came up and it went to one or nothing on him. A ball and no strikes. And then he walloped a towering high fly. It sailed way high up into the center field, Simmons moved in under it and took it nicely for the second out. Then Travis Jackson came to bat. Travis Jackson up, and Gomez had his number two. Jackson went down swinging, retiring the National League here in the second inning. So we come with the score one to nothing in favor of the National League into the third inning with the American League at bat and the National Broadcasting Company bringing it to you. Here's Tom Manning to tell you about the play-by-play here in the third inning. The American League is one run behind as they come to bat and Charlie Carringer. The Detroit Tigers second baseman is, again, the leadoff man. First time up, Charlie singles to center field. Went to second on the center fielder's fumble. The first pitch is a foul inside. Ball two. That is a hook ball. It's the outside corner. And the count on Charlie Carrier, who got them left-handed, is two and nothing. Charlie and Owens ball over. Charlie and Owens ball over. Powerville, Michigan, May 11th, 1903. Strike, ball. Ball two and strike one. As you can all get a picture of Charlie, five feet, 11 and a half, and 180 pounds. Came to Detroit in 1925 from Toronto. Got a batting average, a grand average of 382 for the year. Charlie gets a hold of Mexican and tries to keep in the right field. Boy, that ball was hit right on the label. Looked like it was going crazy for a moment, but Ty Carter turned his back with a crack of the bat and dashed out to the center track and made a sweet running catch for the first out. One down. Nobody on. Ty Trainer and Bill Terry are over in the pitcher's box now, having a bit of a conference with Paul Hubble. Conference is over, and Heidi Manus is coming up. Last time up, Piney walks. Hits the first ball, picks the ground on second base play. Frankie pushes up with it, crosses to Perry. Manus is out. Two men out, nobody on. Boy, oh, those national leaders are whipping that ball around that infield with the speed of lightning. They certainly all stepped up right on their toes this afternoon. Manus gets a great ovation as he comes up for the second side. Last time up, Manus struck out. The American League is half of the third inning, one run behind, two out, nobody on, and Babe Ruth is up. Straight, ball. Rather slow curve ball, just above the knees and over the heart of the plate. They have decided to wait for another one. A cold strike, one to nothing is the count. The pitch, ball. 
That was over, just a little bit too low, and the count on Babe Ruth, ball one and strike one. The score is one to nothing in favor of the National League. First half of the third inning, two out, nobody on. Hubble pitching, here it is. It's too low. Ball two and strike one on Babe Ruth. Lou Gary is hanging around home plate. Lou is coming up there next, you know. Two out, nobody on. Babe Ruth, ball two, strike one, the pitch. A foul! Over into the National League's dugout, which is along first base, and that evens the count at ball two and the strike two. There's a lot of pepper out there on the National League's infield. A lot of baseball players out there, incidentally, three managers, Terry Frazier and Trainer. And the captain, Travis Jackson. Two and two, the pitch. Ball three, that one drives Babe Ruth away from the plate. It was high inside, and now the, the count on the base. Ball three and strike two. Nobody on base, you know, two out. Here's the wind up, three and two, three and two. Ball four. That was high inside, driving the babe again out of the batter's box, and he walked. Lou Gary coming up. Last time up, Gary struck out. I don't see anybody warming up for the National League as yet, so it's just possible that Bill Gary will allow Hubble to go along a little longer. Gary up. Strike one. This is a foul back. is on first base. First half of the third inning. Two out. Jimmy Fox is hanging around home plate now. Here's the pitch. Gets a hold of it along. Smash the right field. Over near the wall. Tyler over close to the wall and makes the catch. And that's all. That was two mighty giants that inning by Gellinger and Gary. But it's all over for the American Leaguers in the first half of the third. Come in for it, Bob. Well, if Gary gets pulled around just a little harder on that one to score, there would have been two runs in that inning because the babe was down on first. Gary came up and smashed that ball hard right on the old snozzle out in the right field. If he'd have pulled it around just about 25 feet, he would have sailed over that low barrier into those right field stands. But the well, that's what uh, between innings that remains are built on. Gerringer was the first man up to lead off man the Americans in the third. And he banged a long, hard hit fly way out to the bullpen in right field. But Kai Kai Kyler was out there with a crack of the bat and took it on the run for a ninth running catch for the first out. Then Manoush came up. Manoush banged one, a draft cutter, down to Frisch on second. He was out on a fast play, Frisch to Terry. And two men were gone. The babe came up, two out, nobody on. Count went to three and two on him. And then he got a walk. Garrick came up and smashed that long one out into right field. But Tyler... Took that one right. This right field is hard to measure here. The angles are peculiar on it. Here we go into the National League share of the third inning now. And the batter is coming into the box. And here's Tom Manning. Gabby Hartnett, the catcher of today's game. Catcher for the Chicago Cubs. Right-hand hitter is first up. And on the first pitch from Gomez, he follows it up on the roof in back of home plate. And the count on Gabby Hartnett is strike one. Carl Hubble, the next hitter. Has a ground ball over the pitcher's head, down short corner, and in fast. Has it with the two, Gary, and Hartford is out. That was a fast play by Joe Cronin, the shortstop of a lazy hopper, just out of Gomez's reach. Now we have one man out in the National League half of the third inning. We're going to have a, a pinch hitter for Kyle Hubble. Herman. Billy Herman, a right-hand hitter, draft for Carl Hubble. Hubble has pitched his three innings and he is through for the day. Gets the first ball, takes the high fly out in the short left field. Cohen going back, then who turns Cohen is under it and has it reached for the out. That was a high fly, then who's and Cohen both going after it. Now we have two men out and nobody out. Billy Herman hitting the first ball pitch to short left field where it was taken by Joe Cohen. Once more, we have the top of the National League's batting order coming up. Frankie Frisch, 
who is responsible for the National League's advantage of one run, who smacked that home run in the first inning, high into the upper deck of the right field stand. Ball one. That was a driving serve ball. That was over, but just a little bit too high. The count on Frankie Smith is right one. Or ball one, rather. Ball two. The third ball is high outside, and the count is two and nothing. Two and nothing on Frankie Smith, the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. That's a high foul down toward first base. Derrick is going back fast. Over near the stands, but it's a little too deep into the boxes and back to first base, and it's a strike. Jerry is certainly a fighting ball player. He danced over for that one, never looked up until he got his hand on the little barrier in front of the boxes, then looked up, but the ball is in the boxes a little too deep, and the count on Frankie Frick, ball two and strike one. The last half of the third inning, you know, Strike ball. Ball two and strike two. Two and two. Two out, nobody on. Ball three. That was the curve ball outside. And now the count on Frankie Fritz is ball three and strike two. The fans have settled down for just a moment now with that great excitement that we had in the first inning. It's a ball, low outside, and Frankie Frisch left. Gomez had Frisch in the hole that time with a count two and two, but wasn't able to get the other two over. He just missed the corner with that third ball, but the other one was plenty low and outside, and Frisch is on first, two out, and Ty Trainer is up. Ty gets that nickname when he's a kid. He was always asking for Ty. Ball one. That was a change of face offering. It's a little bit high and inside. National League is batting in the last half of the third. Two out. Frisch on first. There's a long foul down the right field. And it's a strike. That was a hard smash down the right field. The fans all stood up as it left the bat, but it was fouled by 15 or 20 yards. Ball one and strike one. High trainer is up. Manager in third baseman of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Ball up and back. Strike two and ball one. That ball was about forehead high. Trainer likes him high and he fouled right into that one, but it was a foul back and the count is strike two and ball one. Last half of the third inning, the National League is one, American League is nothing. We have two out. Frankie Fish is on first base. Lefty Gomez is in the box, and the count on trainer is strike two and ball one. Here it is. It's a ground ball. Through the center of the infield, out in the center field. Al Simmons comes up with it, and he returns the ball to fall at second base, while Frankie Frisch pulls up at third. Frankie Frisch reaches third base, standing up. A base hit for Ty Trainer. That was a ground ball through the center of the infield, and it was received by Al Simmons in center field. Now we have Joey Medwick. Joey Medwick of the St. Louis Cardinals coming up. A ball. Low inside. Runners on first and third. You know, last half of the third inning. Two men out. Last time up, Medwick struck out. A foul back. And that evens the count at ball one and strike one. Here's the picture, last half of the third inning. The National League is around in front by the score of one to nothing. Ty Trainer is on first. Frankie Fish is on third. Joe Medwick is up. It's a hold up with the long match. Going, going, going. Into the upper deck of the left field stand for a home run. Frankie Fish crosses the plate. Ty Trainer is roundly third going in. And here comes Joey Medwick. The fans are all standing up, giving Medwick a great ovation. A long home run into the upper deck of the left field stand for a home run. The National Leaguers are out in front by the score of four to nothing. Listen to that 
foul for a moment. Side for Earl. 
Three and nothing is the count. Two out. Conan is on first. It is strike four. Ball three and strike one. That was a burning fast ball right down the old alley. Felt high. Three and one it is. Conan is on first. Two men out. First half of the fourth. The pitch. Swing. It's a long, fast going, going, going. Deep into right field. And it turns off the fence out there. April is rounding second. Conan is rounding third. Here's the throw. It's close to third. He flies. He's safe. A mighty three base hit for Earl Abrel. And Conan crosses the plate. The National League is four. The American League is two. Earl Abrel, the center field of the Cleveland Indians, with that count ball three and strike one. He took a toe hold on that triple coming down the old alley. And boy, did he hit it. He hit it as he hit it some more. That was beautiful to watch. That ball was relayed from Tyler to Berger to third base. Earl Averill with a beautiful hook fly beating the throw. Al Jackson down there raising net at third base. Whistling and what have you. Four to two in favor of the National Leaguers. Two out. Averill on third. Sally Gehring of the Detroit Tigers is up a left-hand batter. One, one single out of two trips to the plate. The pitch. Hit the ball high inside. Mighty Manoush is hanging around. Well, it may develop into a slug fest before it's all over, eh? Here's the pitch. It's a strike. A fast ball right in there, and the count on Charlie Gellinger. Ball one and strike one. Charlie Gellinger, you know, is one of the most likable ball players in the, uh, in the major league. Never has a bad word to say about anybody. No, sir. Ball one and strike one is his count. Ball two. That was a curve ball. That hit the outside corner to a left-hand sticker. And the count is ball two and strike one. First half of the fourth inning. The score. The National Leaguers four. American Leaguers two. Two men out. April on third. Ball two and strike one. And there it is. Ball three. Go outside, and the count is three and one. Mighty Manoush is hanging around home plate, gets up now, and pulls his trousers down and waves that bat a few times. Gabby Hartnett walks out to have a bit of a conference with his battery mate, Lon Warnicke. You know, this battery that we have in there now for the National League is represents the century of progress and the city of Chicago in a big way. Gabby Hartnett, a fine catcher, and Ron Warnicke, a very, very fine right-hand pitcher. Here's the picture again. First half of the fourth inning, two out. Averill on third. Gellinger up ball three, strike one, the pitch. It's too wide, and Gellinger walks. Johnny Gellinger walks, bringing Heine Manu, the mighty left fielder, the slugger of the Washington Senators, is coming up. Charlie Gehringer is doing right well by himself this afternoon. A base knock the first time up, and the third time up to get a base on ball. Now we have Gehringer on first, Averill on third. Two runs behind, Heidi Manoush is up. The left-hand batter with Ron Warnicke pitching. Here it is. Strike one. He takes a terrific cut and misses. Strike one is the count on Heidi Manoush. Anything can happen now. Everybody on the edge of their seats here waiting for it. Like one the pitch. It's a very high infield play over in foul territory now with Ty Trainer in the sun waiting for it, shielding his eyes. He has it. That's all for the American Leaguers in the fourth inning. That was another slow inning. The score now at the end of three and one half innings. The National Leaguers four, American Leaguers two. Come in for it. Warnicke came in to pitch for the National League in the American League half of the fourth inning, and he first had to face Fox, who came and up, and the count went to three and two, and then he banged a hard draft cutter down to Travis Jackson, who fielded it very fast out of the cross of Terry and got it to the bag just about two feet ahead of the runner. He then came up. Simmons banged that ball hard, high, and far away off to the left field grandstand, and just missed clearing by about one yard the barrier above the lower deck. He got a two-bagger on it. So the man on base, one out, and one on. And Thorne at that. Thorne smacked one to left field, just about two feet in, inside the left field foul line, scoring Simmons. A 
think over Joe Cronin. Dickey up, and he fouled to the upper deck at the long strike, and then went down on call strike. Averill came up, banged that ball about 460 yards into right field. There's a 455-foot marker out there about 10 yards short of it. A very, very hard hit ball. A three-bagger scoring Cronin, bringing the score up to 4-2. to two. Geringer came up and walked. Then managed to bat a foul, a very high, towering high foul. Trainer moved over from third base and took it for the third out. Two runs in in that inning on Lon Warnicke. He hit Simmons, Cronin, and Averill. Three hits, two runs, three hits, and no errors. Now we go into the National League half the fourth with a new pitcher coming in for the American League. It's the Big Red. Charlie Ruffing, who's coming in for the American League here as we go into the National League half the fourth, and here's Tom Manning to give it to you. Wally Berger is first up with Charlie Ruffing pitching. The first is a ball high inside, and Wally Berger is forced to drop to the ground. Wally Berger playing center field this afternoon for the National League. Last time up, Wally struck out. A chip foul, it turns off Bill Dickey's shoulder and rolls back to the stand. And the count on Wally, ball one, and the strike one. Bill Terry, coming up next. Wally Berger is first up, you know, in the last half of the fourth inning. The count, ball one, and strike one. Strike two, Wally Berger swung at one that time that was high over his head. The umpire delays the game for a moment to brush off home plate. Wally fell down, his feet kicked all the dirt on the platter, and now it's all washed up and ready for another deal. Strike two and ball one. It is. The high fly to the infield. It's going foul and Fox under it. Fox has it. He almost dropped that. The groan went up from the crowd. But there's a very bright sun there up over third base. Jimmy Fox stood there with his glove. Fielding the sun from his eyes and staggered into foul territory and juggled the ball for a moment, but he hung out of it and that's what counts. One man out, nobody on. Bill Terry is up. Terry, you know, hits him left hand. Strike one. This game is being broadcast and open the fall grounds in New York City by the National Broadcasting Company. Bill Terry is up, strike one, the foul back, strike two. Last half of the fourth inning, one man out and nobody on. The score, the National League is four, American League is two. Bill Terry is up and Travis got to his neck. There's a foul into the seat along third base there with everybody ducking. That was a line smash, one of those bing, bing, bing. Now the count on manager Bill is strike two. Last half of the fourth inning, one out, nobody out. Red Ruffing, the New York Yankees, the right-hander pitching. Has a long smash upstairs in left field, but it's foul. And the count remains strike two. Charlie Ruffing, you know, is a big husky fellow. Raised around 200 pounds, six feet long. Last half of the fourth inning, one out, nobody on. Here's the pitch. The line drive into the outfield of base block. It's a single for Bill Terry. Just got the change there in the outfield. Al Simmons has moved over to left field, and Earl Averill is playing center field, and Babe Ruth in right field. Babe Ruth is in right, Earl Averill in center, and Al Simmons in left. Travis Jackson is up with Bill Terry on first and one man out. The count is ball one on Jackson. Strike swinging. Ball one and strike one.
Travis Jackson, right hand hitter, is up ball one and strike one. Stepping crosses over to Jerry, but Terry is alert and he gets back. Last off of the fourth inning, one out. And the count on Jackson, one and one. Ball two. Dropping shoots in the curve ball, but it's low inside, and the count is ball two and strike one. Gabby Hartnett hanging around home plate. The pitch hits a foul up and back, and the count is ball two and strike two. Top the fourth inning, the National Leaguers, four American Leaguers, two. One man out, and you have Bill Kelly on first. Travis Jackson is up. Red Ruffing, pitching, count of two and two, and there you have it. Ruffing is a long wind up this time, and here it is. Oh, Ruffing is bad over. Count of two and two. Umpire talks about a new ball. Ruffing takes the running time. He stands there facing center field. Ruffing the old ball up front. Now he's back in the box and we're ready to go. Last half of the fourth. One out. Terry is on first. Two and two on the hitter. Jackson. It is. Foul up and back. Now we made two and two. All two and strike two. Those are just two men. Let us remind you again that every seat in the polo grounds this afternoon is occupied very close to six. Thousand fans are out here for this important all-star game. Now we're ready to go. One man out, Terry on first. Count on Jackson is two and two. Here it is. It's a ball. Mighty high. And now it's three and two. With one man out, Terry on first. You can see now he's half to break the second base. Don't always do that, of course, with one out. And we have three and two on Jackson. Now he goes down, he swings, it's a very high fly, he's short, left center field, Averill coming in fast, Averill is under it, he has it. Came a long way for that one. Now he had two men out. Bill Kelly was off with roughing potion that time, he's all the way down to second base, and had to scurry back to first. Now we have Gabby Hartnett coming up. Two men out. Red roughing. The New York Yankees, the right-hander is in the box. Having replaced Lefty Gomez. Here it is. Spike swinging. Last half of the fourth inning, the score. National League is four, the American League is two. Two men out, Bill Kelly on first. Here it is. Spike two, swinging. Red Ruffing has plenty of speed this afternoon. Two strikes to Gabby Hartnett were burning fast balls about letter high. Hartnett, Hartnett swinging very hard at both of them. There it is. He waits one. And the count is two and one. Right two and ball one. Nothing looks over the first base and then takes a long stretch. There it is. He waits another one. It's too high. And the count on Gabby Hartnett is two and two. Nova National Broadcasting Company is bringing you this game from the Polo Ground in New York. Now the two and two at ground ball down third base way. Fox has it to throw. Beautiful throw, let her hide to Gary and Gabby Hartman is out. That's all for the National Leaguers in the fourth inning. And the score, National Leaguers four, American Leaguers two. As we get ready to win the first half of the fifth inning. Come in for it. And in this most colorful of all baseball games, these colorful players standing every spot on the diamond and every name in the batting order sparkling with the ability which they've shown and demonstrated and started up in the record book. Ruffing came into pitch for the American League as the National Leaguers came up in the fourth. And Ruffing had Berger to face first. Berger fouled very high and Fox just back of third measured it having to warm the sun out of his eyes with the big net as it came down. He almost misjudged it, had to leap back about a foot as it came down into his glove, and there was one out. Terry up, and Terry got a ringing single in left field, went down to first. Jackson came up, had a lot of fouls, and then banged one out to center field, where Earl Averill took care of that. 
Then Hart hit it back. Two out. One on. He banged one hard down the third, where Fox took it. Got it across to Gehrig, retiring the National League in the fourth. And the score is four for the National Leaguers and two for the American League. And the National Broadcasting Company is bringing this to you from the Polo Ground. As we go into the fifth inning, here's Tom Manning to give you the play-by-play description. Long water can get off the Chicago Cubs as the pitcher. Babe Ruth is up. The first pitch to the Bays. It's a strike. The Bays pulled away from home plate. And now he's talking to the umpire. But regardless, it's a strike. Babe Ruth struck out the first time up and walked in the third inning. Strike one on the Bays. The pitch. Strike two. Falls. Again, Babe Ruth pulls away from the plate. And the count is two and nothing. Dave was leaning on his back now about eight or ten feet away from home plate. And is talking with the umpire. And the count is two or nothing, you know. So Dave is the first man up in the fifth inning. Lou Gary, Columbia Lou, coming up next. Two or nothing on the base to pick. Fair inside. Out on Babe Ruth now is strike two and ball one. The umpire is waiting for a moment while he gets out the little whisk room and pushes off home plate. Pornick is a pitcher, you know. Strike two and ball one. Here it is. Ball two. A fastball is high inside. Again, Babe Ruth ducks away from home plate and the count is two and two. Right, but it's foul. 
That was far funny. And the count on Luke Gehrig is three and two. Jimmy Fox, you know, is coming up next. Thurman tosses out a new ball. Hartnett flips it down to Pye Trader. Pye takes his glove off. Gives it a bit of a massage and then tosses it over to Lon Warnicky. Warnicky is a right-hand pitcher. The count is three and two on Luke Gehrig with Babe Ruth on first. The result of a base on ball. Nobody else. Here it is. It's too low, and Jerry walks. With the count three and two, Warnicky set a fast ball down the alley, but it was low, and now we have Jerry on first, Dave Ruth on second, and manager Bill Terry, five trainer, Mikey Fritz, Jackson, and Hartnett all walking out to the pitcher's top for a conference with Ron Warnicky. Warnicky, I please, and... Going out of the box. Yes, Ron Warnicky is walking slowly, nonchalantly over toward the National League dugout, which is located along the first state line. Sissy Jean is running down to the, the center field of the bullpen to warm up. So we we'll probably have Al Mungo. Ball is too low. 
Well, it's a ball game again now. For a while there, it looked awful bad for the American Leaguers with the score four to nothing. Two runs last inning, they had one in with runners on first and third, and nobody else. Al Simmons is up, ball one. A ground ball, down to keep short. Jackson comes up with it. His throw to second is a bit high. Before Frankie puts off the bat, Garrett crosses the plate, and the score is tied for The official ruling, I do not believe, will be an error. It is scored as a hit. Correct. That was a ground ball between Trainer and Jackson. Jackson went into deep short, far to his right, and bagged the ball and ran off Dallas. He threw to second base, and Frankie Frick had to leap into the air to steer the throw. But we believe that Jimmy Fox would have beaten the throw, and so it is scored as a base hit for Al Simmons. Scores four and four, you know, and Manica's great corner. A right hand batter is coming up. Runners on first and second, nobody else. Coleman attempts to bump. It's a pop fire. On the goal, Jackson hit a catch he makes. A beautiful catch. Joe Coleman attempts to sacrifice, and he pops the fire ball up. And Gabby Hart has ripped off his mask and went back and stumbling, took the ball on the edge of his block, and it finally rolled into the center. And Gabby staggered and staggered some more, but was able to hang on to it for the first out. The runners were unable to advance. So we have Al Simmons on first, Jimmy Fox on second, one man out, and catcher Bill Dickey of the New York Yankees coming up. What a ball game, what catches, what hits, what plays, what plays. Here it is, a ball outside. That was a burning fast ball that was outside. Dickey stepped right up there, ready to hit. One to nothing is the count. One man out of the fifth inning. The pitch. It's too low inside. And the count on Bill Dickey is ball two. That familiar whistle of Al Jack is ringing through the polo ground. Boy, how he can whistle when he's coaching there at third base. The count on Bill Dickey, ball two, the pitch. It's outside, ball three. Ball three is the count. Earl Abel coming up next. That means that the pitcher will hit in Heidi Manucci's spot. Second. Strike call. Hungo aimed that one right down the alley, so high. And now the count on Bill Dickey, a left hand batter. Ball three, strike one. Al Simmons is on first. Jimmy Fox is on second. Fifth inning, one out. Strike call. Dan Mungo aimed that one right down through the heart of the potter, and it's three and two. Three balls and two strikes, runners on first and second. Will they go? Yes, they will. They can go. It's a ball outside, and the bases are loaded. The American League attack this afternoon with one man out. This is the third occasion we have had a chance to observe it. With one man out, runners on first and second. And three and two on the batter, they are off with the pitcher's motion. That time, Fox and Simmons were off with the count three and two. Now we have the sack loaded, and Earl Averill is coming up. It was Earl Averill who had that flighty triple to deep right center field when he went in as a substitute batter for Lefty Gomez. Earl Averill hit the left hand of the bases loaded one out. Hit the ball, it was too low. That was over the plate. Abram started to step into it, but changed his mind, and it was declared a ball. Low. Pitch loaded. Dickey on first, Simmons on second, Fox on third, one off. Here's the pitch. It's a ball. Low outside, and the count on Averill is two and nothing. Averill looks over to the bench now, get a signal from Anakin Joe Coleman as to whether or not to hit this triple when it comes down the alley. Not knowing the signals, of course, we can't relay it to you, but we'll see anyway. Ball two, here it is. He swings, hits it, and drives inside the first base bag at the base hit. Fox has scored, Simmons has scored. Here comes Dickey, the third, with the two base hit for Abriel. Fox and Simmons have scored. Bill Dickey is on third base, Abriel is on second. That is scored as a double for Earl Abriel, the great little center fielder of the Cleveland Indians. He 
reception there as a substitute batter in the fourth inning and struck out a long triple and coming up here now in the fifth inning with a bag loaded and with a count two and stuffing the old triple came down the alley and he met it right between the eyes and sailed it down the right field foul line for two bases sending Fox and Simmons across the plate and putting the American League team out in front by the score of six to four Yes, indeed, it's a ball game. Now we have Bill Dickey on third base, Early Bill on second, one man out. Dan Mungo is going to remain in the pitching box. Trainer, Perry, and Hartman were out there. Sally Gehring is up. The old baseball strategy. That meeting, from that meeting comes the strategy that Sally Gehring, on the left-hand batter, shall be purposely passed. The count is ball two, ball three. The bases will again be loaded. Sally Ruffing, who is also a great hitter, is going to bat for himself. Geringer was purposely passed. Yes, Charlie Geringer is doing right well. A single and two bases on balls out of four trips to the plate. Bases loaded. Red Ruffing is up. The first pitch, strike, swinging. Bill Dickey is on third. Earl Averill is on second. Charlie Geringer is on first. One man out, six to four, the American Leaguers. That's a ball, a hook ball, missed the outside corner of the plate, and the count is ball one and strike one. Dan Mungo, right hander of the National League, is in the box. The wind up, the pitch. It's too high, outside, ball two. Ball two and strike one. First half of the fifth inning, six to four in favor of the American Leaguers. And the count on Charlie Ruffing, ball two and strike one. Ball three, a fast ball is low inside. That one throws Charlie, Gellinger, Charlie, Charlie Ruffing out of the box. And the count is ball three and strike one. Babe Ruth is hanging around home plate. Ball three and strike one is the count. Here's the wind up, the base is loaded, one out. He swings, he misses. Three and two is the count. You know this game is coming to you from the Polo Grounds in New York City and being sent to you by the National Broadcasting Company. Fifth inning, base is loaded, one out. Three and two on the hitter, the pitch. It's a ground ball, it's a base hitter in the left field. Dickey has scored, Averill is rounding third. Frederick has retrieved the ball, whips it into second base, carrying a stop at second. Bill Dickey and Earl Averill cross the plate, making the score 8-4 to four in favor of the American League. We have Ruffing on first base. Charlie Geringer is on second and one man out. Bill Curry and Frankie Frisch have walked into the pitcher's box and are having a bit of a conference with Dan Mungo. That's six runs this inning for the American Leaguers. Babe Ruth is up there. One man out, you know. Runners on first and second. It's the first half of the fifth inning. Sixty thousand throats yelling themselves forth. Oh, he takes a mighty swing and misses. Strike one. The big babe wasn't kidding on that last strike, though, I want to tell you. Strike one is the count on the page, you know. There it is. Ball, it was too high and outside. Ball one and strike one. Marathon Lou Gary hanging around home plate. Ball one, strike one, the stretch, the pitch. The ball to down first. Terry picks the ball up, steps on first. For the foot out, unassisted, the runner's advancing. Hey, Bruce is still wondering whether that was fair or not. That was a ball that was right on the line. Took our time on calling that one. Terry took that ball as it was bounding right over the sack and stepped on the bag for the put out of Babe Ruth unassisted. But Geringer went to third and Ruffing went to second. Now we have Jerry coming up with two men out. Right down the old alley for a cold strike. I'm going to put Jerry down there at call. 
Up with Fox coming up next. Swings and misses. Fight two. Fight two is the count. Two men out. Runners on. First and second. There it is. Fight three. Swing in. That was a low curve ball. Down around the knees of Garrick. Just a mighty cut at. And miss. Come in for it, Bob. Here's a faster view of that hot fifth inning and what a hot fifth inning it was. Ruth up at bat to face Warnicky and he walks. Here he comes up and he walks. Congo is steady to replace Warnicky. Fox comes up to bat, match one, to do right for a single scoring Ruth. Here he's going to third. Simmons comes up to bat to on, nobody out. It's a short Jackson throws to second scoring the tying run. Here he's coming in, Fox going to second. Jackson did a great job at even stopping that ball and trying to toss it off balance. It was scored as a hit. For Simmons. Cohen came up and fouled out to Hartman. Dickey at bat, walked filling the bag, and Averill came up, doubled the right field, scoring Simmons and Fox. Then Deirdre came to bat, walked loading the bases. Ruffing came up, and <laughs> next one, a hunt in the left field, scoring Averill and Dickey. Ruth at bat, two on and one out. He smacked one right down the first base line to Bill Terry. Bill Terry took it just about two feet off the bag, back in the bag, and stepped on it to save out Terry on his sister. Then Garrick came up to bat. And took three terrific swings at the ball and failed to connect with what Mungo had on it, retiring the side. Six runs, four hits, and no errors. Taking the score of the American League eight and the National League four. That's the score of the American League leading by four runs as we go into the National League half the fifth inning. National Broadcasting Company bringing to you this play-by-play account from the Polo Ground in New York of this great all-star game between the stars of the American League and the stars of the National League for the old ball players who need their help. Now these guys can give it to them while they're in there play great baseball, great baseball out here before some 60,000 fans who will really love to come out here and see their favorites perform. As we said once before, it's a manager's dream, these ball clubs, and a pitcher's nightmare. It proves to be when one after the other, they came up, up there and you're afraid to walk this one because then look what you've got coming. Why, even when they walk to get the rubbing, the rubbing back out there have packed out that ball the left field for a single. He's no mean hitter. Well, now we'll do the afternoon the six half the sixth inning. With the batting order, the batting order coming up in this manner. We have Pepper Martin coming in to that. I believe he's going to be first. He's walking up there standing back to the line while they're warming up here in the box. The American League pitcher is taking place out there. Yes, sir. I believe there's a change in pitchers at this time. Or is it still the big red down there? It's still red wrapping down there in the box, pitching to Bill Dickey. Bill Dickey, who's been doing yeoman service in this baseball game, he's down there now taking roughing. That's Martin. He's great. Hero of the 1931 World Series is down there swinging his bat to get himself in shape to face the pitching of the Big Red, which isn't any easy thing to do. The old argument about whether the hitters will win the game or whether the pitchers will win the game has been turned inside out and then back again here this afternoon. In the first three innings, when Hubble had it on the American League batters, and then here in the fourth and fifth, when Warnicky and Mungo have been slapped pretty freely for six runs. Six runs in the fourth, eight runs in the fourth and fifth, two in the fourth, and six in the fifth. Two in the fourth and six in the fifth. That was the number that came in. There's some sort of a conference going on down here for a moment. The umpires have walked off the field, and the boys in blue, two of them have come back on. I believe Rick Owen and George Moyarty have walked back in. The American League umpires were Charlie Furman and Dolly Stark. The National League umpires are for the moment. We couldn't tell you because they disappeared from the diamond. And now, Pepper Martin has picked up two bats. He evidently thought he was going to get to step up there a moment ago, and he had dropped one of them, but he has two of them now, swinging them high and mighty just like you do tonight. He's letting it swing back over his shoulder, come down, tap his leg, and then back again. Down here for the moment, in front of the plate, is McKechnie, one of the coaches this afternoon. What a coaching staff we have. And what a number of managers we have in this National League team of all-stars who are out there on the diamond. Bill McKechnie is standing there talking to George Majority for the moment, while Ruffing has gone back to tossing him to Bill Dickey. 
For the moment, he has stopped. The players themselves are wondering what the concert's about, and it hasn't been discovered just yet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have here a gentleman whose voice we're sure you all know, one who became famous a number of years ago when he pulled a line which sounded like the trap shooter's huddle. Come down here, Bill Mundy. I want you to say a word. Here's Bill Mundy, the gentleman from Georgia. Speak up, Bill. Thank you, bud. Good afternoon, folks of the last big ensemble. The top of the morning to those of you out in California. We're probably having this broadcast with your breakfast coffee. Quite a show these boys are putting on up here in the polo grounds today. Think of it. Just about $3 million worth of baseball flakes and dress parade. The Alpha and Omega of Diamond Perfection assembled to do mortal combat for most worthy cause. It says there's about 50,000 people here, while there are country boys like myself, it looks like about 10 million. By the way, for a long time, I wondered just where this boy Tom Manning derived the other veteran self and fortune and enthusiasm for his vibrant, vivid baseball broadcast. No so long in the dark, however. I met him yesterday. I found out his secret. He's red-headed. Small top. In fact, the most red-headed human being I ever saw. Think to yourself, the most red-headed man, woman, and child you ever beheld. Multiply the shade of his or her hair by 25. You have a big idea of just how red-headed Tom Manning is. I'm on my vacation up here, so I'll leave you now. You go to work, Tom. Say, Bill, how's the old pal Bobby Jones out there? Television, the best in the world, the only one you know, made a clean sweep. Two over in Great Britain, two over here. Here's Atlanta boy, and Atlanta to South makes you proud of it. Thanks a lot, Bill Monday. We certainly all enjoyed your broadcast of football games. God's to all the folks down in Atlanta. Ladies and gentlemen, Today we are sending you the All-Star Game. Of course, you might tell us that we're being delayed here for a few moments. The umpires have changed now. The game is just half over, four and a half innings with the score. The American League is eight, the National League is four. There's one change in the American League lineup now. And Benny Chapman, reputed to be one of the fastest runners in the Major League, replaces Babe Ruth in a right field for the American League. Well, ready to go now. Pepper Martin is hitting for uh, Congo. Fred Ruffing is still in the box, sticky behind the bat. Infield is the same. Fox at third, Colin short, Gehring at second, and Gary at first. Pepper Martin, the right-hand hitter, is up the star of the 1931 series. You shall never forget Pepper Martin. What he did in that series will live forever and ever. And the count is ball two. It's the last half of the fifth inning. The score, the American League is eight, National League is four. Pepper Martin is batting for Dan Hunter.
Donnie Ruffing is in the box. Red Ruffing. Big red-headed picture. We red-heads must stick together. Strike two and ball one. There's a line. Smash the base into the left center field. Watson Brown is quick and coming to third. Simmons has the ball. He turns it to second base. And it's taken out by Kellinger. And Dick drops the first. Watson drops the third. Dick drops the third. And the second hit of the afternoon for the Cubs. And the
Bell Ox, Bell Ox, I believe is coming in. This is not official as yet, but Bell Ox is coming up to the plate, swinging two bats. If he bats, he will bat for Ty Ty Tyler. Bell Harder, Bell Harder, the Cleveland Indians, is handling in from deep left center field. The American Leaguers are warming up this afternoon in deep left center field, and the National Leaguers bullpen is in deep right center field. They're both the same distance apart, except that the American Leaguers, who are the visiting club today, incidentally, get plenty of good sunshine out there in center field, right up to this stadium over in right field. Bell of Arthur of the Cleveland Indians have all got away to a rather cool start this year, pitching good baseball, allowing only a few hits per game, but was unable to win. But the last six turns out, he's got a world beater. Bell Hardy, you know, is just a kid, right-hand pitcher. Joe Coleman treats him as he nears shortstop. That's a long walk from out there. Let's see, the sign is 455 feet away. 455 feet out to the right center field bullpen where Hart has been warming up. Flies in the box and has started to warm up with catcher Bill Dickey. It's the last half of the fifth inning. This game has developed into a free hitting affair after Carl Hubble left the game. Carl Hubble, there's no free hit when Hubble was in the box. This is the third American League pitch of the afternoon. We started out with Gomez. And then we had Ruffing. And now this is the fifth inning. We had Mel Harder replacing Charlie Ruffing. Well, the National League batter saw will perhaps be one of the greatest curveballs in the uh, Major League. Mel Harder, you know, is reputed to have one of the finest returns in the Majors today. Has a fairly good fastball along with it. Last half of the fifth inning, eight to six in favor of the American Leaguers. 
Nobody out. Runners on first and second. Ball two, strike two, and here it is. Last one was better high but outside. 
And the count is two and nothing. Two and nothing, and Bellot is on second base. It is ball three. Oh, and was Brother Bill Terry ready to hit that one with the count two and nothing? Harder's trying to keep the ball low outside for Memphis Bill, and now it's three and nothing. Three and nothing, here it is. Strike ball. Bill Terry went through some motions down there, pointing his bat directly toward Harder, but Harder slipped that fast one. Right across, belt high. Ball three and strike one. Three and one. And here it is. Go ahead, he says. Ball four. Bill Terry walks. Mellon is on second. Travis Jackson was up there ready to hit, but he has walked back toward the Yankee, or the National Leaguers dugout. We're going to have a substitute batter for him. that Hockey Pond of Pittsburgh is going to bat for him. That's not official as yet. That's who's coming up there with two bats, however. Bill McKinney, manager of the Braves, is running there to home plate and is having a bit of a conference with Hockey Pond. That's correct, now it's official. Vaughn batting for Jackson. Vaughn hits him left-handed. Mel Harder, a right-hander, is in the box. Here's the pitch. Strike, ball. Here's the picture again quickly. Last half of the fifth inning. Eight to seven in favor of the American League. Two men out. Mel Harder's on second. Bill Perry is on first. And Archie Vaughn, Pittsburgh Pirates, shortstop, batting for Travis Jackson. He hits him left-handed. The pitch, ball. A hook ball missed the outside corner, and the count is ball one and strike one. Archie has a count of ball one and strike one. Gabby Hartnett coming up next. Here's the pitch. Ball two. That was over the high of the plate, but too low. Now the count on ball. Ball two and strike one. Somebody just remarked it's a good thing they started early. They've been playing just two hours right now. Ball two and strike one. Ball is the hitter. Runners on first and second. It is. A foul ball down short. Corner comes up with a crossing. To Jerry there, forcing Corey at second. And that requires an action leaguer for the fifth inning. The score is eight to seven in favor of the American leaguers. We're going to have plenty of changes as we start the sixth inning. Come in, Paul Bond. And here's that National League fifth in which they came up three runs to trail now by one run, eight to seven in favor of the American League. Martin came up and walked. First came to bat, knocked out a single to left center, and Martin wheeled his way around the third. Then Trainer came up, two on and nobody out, smacked a single off here to his down a second, scoring Martin and sending Frisch down two seconds. Klein up to bat for Medwick, two on and nobody out, and he smacked the Hartman to right field, scoring Frisch. Then Ott, Ott appeared up the plate to bat in place of Ty Ty Tyler. Starting off by the second man of the 372 batter that came up in this inning, the four rather, and Mel Harder was immediately signaled for from the bullpen and came in and replaced Ruffing. After three men had come in and banged a hit off Ruffing, Ruffing retired then from the game. His record wasn't bad for the inning he had pitched. Third, fourth, the rather fourth and half the fifth. He had two runs scored on him, three hits, and had given one walk. These three hits all the way right of the way with full, and Mel Harder, the great curveball artist of Cleveland, came in to replace him for the American League. Mel Lopp was the first man to face him, two on and nobody out. He snatched a liner out to Chapman, Ben Chapman, who had played to replace Babe Ruth in right field, who dropped it and threw to second after getting it, forcing Glenn up. Scored as a fielder's choice. Paul Winner came up to bat for Berger. Struck out, and on the third strike, Cleaner scored on a double steal. Mel Lopp saved it second, although it had been pegged down there by Bill Dickey down to Garrett. Terry came up and walked, one on and two out. Barbon came up with two on, and the bat for Jackson smacked one down, 
to Short, forcing Terry out at second, Short two seconds. That is Thorman to Garrett. So we go into the sixth inning with the National League trailing the American League by one run. The score is American League eight, National League seven. We go into this sixth inning of this red hot ball game of the All Stars, brought to you with the National Broadcasting Company from Polo Ground, with Tom Manning giving you the play by play. Come in, Tom. Here's the changes before we start. In the National League, we find a Bell Ott replaces Tyler in right. Paul Wainer replaces Berger in center. Frank replaces Bedwick in left. Vaughn replaces Jackson in short. And Dizzy Dean, the St. Louis Cardinals, is in the box. And Lopez is the catcher for the National League. Jimmy Fox is going to start the sixth inning. Eight to seven, you know, in favor of the American League. And the count on Jimmy Fox is ball one. And this last one was a call strike. Ball one and a strike one. Fox is up and Harold Simmons is hanging him out. Ball one and strike one. First man up in the sixth inning. Ball two. Dizzy Dean shoving up a change of pace offering. That was just too low. Two and one. Here it is. Strike. Ball two and two. Ball two and strike two. Boy, Dizzy Dean has been pitching a lot of baseball this year for the St. Louis Cardinals. His brother is pitching a great game, too. Mike Green swinging. With a count, two and two. Dean steps on the gas. Jumped over a burning fastball and puck swung and missed. One man out in the first half of the sixth inning. Al Simmons was playing left field. That question is up. Al Simmons and old Batsum right-handed. Hit the first ball, pitch, a very high fly to short right center field with Chris Hot. Everybody on it. Chris gets his hands on the ball but drops it. Chris dashed out in the short right center field and waved Wiener and Hot away. He had both hands on the ball, but it got away. And Al Simmons raced to second base. It is scored as a two-base hit. That's scored as a two-base hit for Al Simmons. In a sixth inning, nobody else. Manager Joe Coleman is up. Joe, you know, bats him right-handed. That was a very high fly ball. It must be said that Frankie Fritz was looking right up into the sun. Very possible that one of the outfielders, either Ott or Paul Wainer, could have made the catch. But Quick elected to dive for it, and the last moment he had to dive for it, and the official scores were the opinion that it should be scored as a two-base hit. In a moment, while up by George Moriarty plays New York's finest out of that runway out in center field. The are out there keeping the crowd in order, and George is of the opinion that they're in the way. Coleman hits the first ball, hits a line drive over to Green and head into left field. The ball rolls out to the left field corner. Simmons rounds third and scores. The goal is to switch at second base. Coleman slides, the ball arrives. Coleman is safe, a two base hit. Nine to seven in favor of the American Lakers. Have a beautiful hit by Joe Coleman. A line drive about seven or eight feet over Pie Crainer's head. Ball rolled out against the billboard in the left field corner. Bill Zickey is up. Strike. Call. Nobody out. Joe Coleman is perched on second base. Flexed one man out is right. One man out, and Coleman is on second base. Bill Zickey is up, and the count is strike one. Jimmy Fox is strike one. Strike. Call. Two and nothing. First half of the sixth inning, nine to seven in favor of the American League team. Joe Coleman is on second, one out, and Bill Dickey, the batter, has a count of two strikes. Abel hanging around home plate. Ball one, high outside. Strike two, ball one. Dizzy Dean of the St. Louis Cardinals of the National League is in the box. 
A ball well, high outside on the count on catcher Bill Dickey is two and two. Ball two and strike two. First half of the sixth inning, nine to seven in favor of the American League. Here's the pitch. Ball three. That was sort of a dizzy curveball. It was in there too low. Bill Dickey getting his feet out of the way of it. And now the count is three and two. Joe Cronin is on second base. Earl Averill, left hand hitter, is next up. Three and two, the pitch. A foul back. That ball hit Lopez on the cliff. He's rubbing it around for a moment. been a rather large afternoon for about 60,000 baseball fans at the Polo Grounds here in New York this afternoon. They've watched a lot of baseball. Three and two on the hitter. Another foul back. One of the highlights of this afternoon's game to arrive here early and watch the batting practice. You know, there's this great array of hitters out here in both leagues. Finest hitters in the country. Pitchers shooting him down the alley. They were smacking him to all parts of this polo ground. Ready to go again. One out, Stroman on second. Three and two on Bill Dickey, the pitcher. Ball four, and Dickey walks. Earl Averill coming up. Averill, he turned his team with the Cleveland Indians. He came in as a substitute batter for Gomez and triple to deep field. He was a exploded and back with a double to the left field corner. Time has been called for a moment. Al Stack is running out towards second base. Let's see. He's going to have a substitute runner, I believe. Yes. I believe Mickey Cochran is going to run for Bill Dickey. Mickey Cochran. Mickey Cochran replaces Bill Dickey running at first base. And, of course, Mike will probably catch. Today he's doing a great job of managing the Detroit Tiger team. Just a half game out of first place. Dick is one fine ball player and a slow chap. Ready to go. Averill is up there with Cochran on first. Cronin on second. First pitch to Averill is a ball. A burning fastball is inside. Here it is. Ball two. Slow sweeping curveball to the outside. Come on, Earl Averill. Muhammad Slugger. Ball two. Now three. That ball slow inside, and now the count on Averill is three and nothing. Charlie Gavin is coming up next. Strike ball. Oh, it's rather funny out here this afternoon watching one of these managers ordering a lot of other managers around. The managers today, Terry and Scott. Three and one on April. High foul up and back. And the count is three and two. All three and strike two. First half of the sixth inning in 08 to 7. 9 to 7, rather. 9 to 7 in favor of the American League. Earl Averill has a full count of three and two. Dizzy Dean, tall right-handers, getting ready to pitch. Here it is. Three and two is the count. A play at second base. Stolen slides. He's safe. Hockey ball back over and back at Stolen at second that time. That's when Dean was ready to shoot the ball. Right work. And he turned and flipped it to second base. Now he's ready again. There's the stretch. Three and two on Averill, the hitter. Still fooling around, looking out towards second. Oh, Dean steps out of the box. Dave Brown and Joe Crown are having a little game of hide and go seek down there at second base. Now oh, finally he's ready. Here it is. Three and two. Strike three. He swings. And Crown is back to second base. Both has it running down. All the way to short. Yes, has gone up. And he crosses the ball to Crown. And Crown is out. Runners on first and second. Earl Averill had a count of three and two. He swung at the 
third strike. Joe Palmer started for third base, then turned around and started back to second. Lopez, the catcher, ran all the way down to the shortstop position, and in fact made the tag for Cronin and missed him. Then Cronin dashed for second base, and he tossed the ball over to Palmer, and Cronin was tagged out. Come in, for it. That was a funny double play, and the whole crowd liked it. With Lopez running out almost the second time, he starts running down the line, then tossing the second, and then the second, he caught the ball who took the throw there, throwing down the first, retiring the side after the strikeout. Yes, sir, that was the kind, that was one of those that you can put in the book. That is, it was a regular scheduled game, a very peculiar double play, and one that gave the crowd a thrill. Dean opened the American League six pitching for the Nationals, replacing Mungo at the start of the six. Fox was the first man to come up to face him here in the American League half of the six, in which they lead nine to seven. Fox up, but South went to two and two, and Fox struck out. Simmons came up, glad to short center, fresh, backed out for it. Dropped it, Joel Farzer came down the sun, and it was scored by the official scorer as a two-base hit for Simmons. Cronin up to bat, doubled hard into left field, over third base, scoring Simmons. Dickey came up, one on and one out, down went to three and two, and he walked, and Cochran went in to run for him. Averill came to bat, two on and one out, and then ensued that double play at the strike, with, after he swung hard at the ball with Lopez, Going down to second, it's been one of those plays where both men had moved off their track, started to run, and Averill swung hard. Lopez, then seeing the situation, ran out. The runners, Cochran and Cronin, wondering just what was happening. They both were in a position where they could hardly go back without the ball being thrown to the base, which they'd try to return, thinking they could brave it out, and that funny play which Tom Manning described to you in turning off this sixth inning. So here we go into the sevens with the Americans leading 9-7 to seven, and Tom Manning to give you the play-by-play. Here we go. So that's the one of the last half of the sixth point. National League coming to bat, and it's 9-7. to 9-7 in favor of the American Leaguers, and Lopez is the first hitter. Lopez, you know, hits him right-handed. No harder is in the box for the American Leaguers, and Mickey Cochran is got him. Count ball one, and he swings and misses. Right. Ball one and strike one. On Lopez. Lopez can always be played. Gabby Hartnett behind the bat for the National League. Score nine to seven. He the to cross. Jimmy Fox up by laying down the front, but the ball is foul. Strike two. That looks like a pretty good idea there for a moment. Not been a long time since Jimmy Fox has played third base. At least regularly. Jimmy Fox came into the American League a long time ago as a catcher, then turned out to be a third tackle and finally a first base. They tell me he looks pretty good over that first, too. Particularly so, and he's up to the back with the back of his hand. Strike two, ball one, on Lopez. Strike three. That was a beautiful hook ball coming over there about better high, both way down around the knees, with Lopez swinging over the ball. Well, Mr. Dean is coming up now. Mr. Dean of the St. Louis Cardinals. Big tall fellow, you know, he bats him and throws him right-handed. Now hard are the Indians in the box. Mike Cochran of the Tigers behind the bat. Files the first one upstairs, strike. Last half of the sixth inning, the score nine to seven in favor of the American League. Busy Dean, the next and the count, strike one. Ball one. Mickey Cochran digs the ball out of the dirt and whips it back to Mel Harder, plenty fast. Ball one and strike one. There's the pitch, one and one on the hitter. Strike two, ball. Sweet serve ball with the stove high. Strike two and ball one. The American League is in field. The man does it to start. That was a ball, not so good. Two and two. 
Last drive of the sixth inning, one man out. Frankie Fish coming up next. Two and two. Has the line flash to the left field. Simmons coming in fast. Oh, he makes a beautiful running catch. Three high coming in there at top speed of that low line drive. And now we have two outs. Two outs and nobody on. Frank Fish coming up. Frankie has a home run based on balls and a single out of three trips to the plate. It was Frankie and O's. Max up. Ball up into the right field. Upper deck for a home run. First up in the first inning. Barry on. Out of the top. Ball was just a little bit too high. Out of the pitching. Cotton catches. Two out. Last half of the sixth inning. Frankie Fish is up. Ball one. This is long ball down short. Cannon comes up with it. Passes to Jerry. Fish is out. That's all for the National Leaguers in the sixth inning. It was scored. The American League is nine. The National League is seven. This game is being sent to you by the National Broadcasting Company. Get in for a song. Well, that's the end of the sixth song. Yes, sir. And the snappy half of the sixth. Just now in two. And the National League is up at bat, led off by Lopez. Lopez, the catcher, and the crowd is all getting up for the old seventh inning set. Here at the Polo Ground, the all-star game between the American and National League. Lopez led off. The count went to one ball and two strikes. And then he swung hard and went down swinging. One out. Dean then came up. Dizzy Dean, the Dizzy of the Dean brothers, as sometimes you read about him. Came up and the count went to two and two. And then he smacked one into left field. Simmons coming in very fast. Caught it right at his knee. He's making a beautiful running catch. Out Dean fly out into left. That was two out for the National Leaguers in the six. Then Frankie Fish. Gordon Flash came up to bat. Fish banged a hard one down to short. Gorn took it in deep short. Wheels got it down to first. The Lou Gehrig retiring the National League in the six. And we go into the seventh. Seven, that's right this time with the American League leading nine to seven. Here's Tom Manning to give you the play-by-play of the seventh inning. Willie Herman replaces Frankie Fish at second base for the National League. Willie Herman is playing second in place of Fish. Staying is up, ball one. Ball two. Dizzy Dean is still in the box for the National League with a Lopez behind the back. That's not just from Lopez on the field. Now they're going this two and nothing. Strike throw. Dean had that one in there with 20 on it, too. Throw two and strike one. First half of the seventh inning. Nine to seven, the American League. Ball three. A lazy third ball is too high. Three and one. Eight is. Now he takes a great cut at that one. Three and two. All three and strike two on Charlie Jr. Look out. The line snags up here in the stand, and the count remains three and two. As it's flashed off the right field, looks like a base knock. It is just inside the line. Gelling is going to stick it. Close, here's the throw. It's 24. He's out. He is out at second base. Got it, Gelling is playing one down into the right field corner. Now out the over there on the ball. Picks it up and the ball and Gelling are arriving almost at the same time. Gelling is sliding in. Hockey Bone took that ball and dropped it on Gelling for a sweet close play. Umpire goes for the at his nose, not five inches from that play when he declared carrying him out. Well, that's another hit for Charlie. Two hits, two bases on ball. One out. Mel Harder is up, the American Leaguer's pitcher. Mel hit all bats and throws right hand. Mel Harder is up there, and the count is ball one and strike one. First half of the seventh inning. One man out, nobody on. Here it is. Strike two. He cuts and misses. 
Harder heard his fingernails swinging that time, stepped out of the box and looked at it, but he's right back in there. Strike two, ball one. The pitch he swung rather feebly at that one. He started the swing and then tried to hold the swing, and it was a foul ball. Strike two and ball one. That was dangerously close to being a bunt. Strike two and ball one, and here it is. Strike three, he swings and misses. First half of the seventh inning, two men out. Benny Chapman is coming up. In the American League lineup at present, the pitcher is batting second. That occurred because early April will hit for the pitcher one end of the ball game, and of course in the pitcher. He's the first ball, hits the ball, back in the deep center field. It's going, going out against the center field bench. Chapman is rounding second. Here's the ball. Chapman's going to third. He stops at third base. That was a long crash out against the 455 foot sign in left center field. Chuck Klein and Paul Wainer both dashing out there for it. That they were a mile away from him. Here's the binoculars. Ball's kept right on going. And Philip landed out against the scoreboard. That was quite a shot by Sir Benny Chapman. And how that baby can dash around the bag. Two men out. And Lou Gehrig is up. They tell me this Gehrig is quite a ball player. Two men out. Chapman on first. Dizzy Dean, the right hander, is in the box. And Lou Gehrig is up. Strike one, call. Here's the windup. Ball, a burning back ball is high on the outside on the count on Gehrig is ball one and strike two. Lou Gehrig is out, umpire Owen, to examine the ball. He does. Lou Gehrig was right. Ball is tossed out of the game, and now we have a new one. The count on Larrabee Lou is ball one and strike one. First half of the seventh inning, nine to seven in favor of the American League. Nine to seven. Two out. Chapman is on third. Strike. Ball. Now the count on Lou Gehrig is strike two and ball one. So far, does he seem he's looking at Derek saying you're just a big, bad wolf and I ain't scared? Here it is, two and one. Strike three, ball! That was a fast ball right down the alley, so high, with plenty on it. That's all for the American Leaguers in the seventh inning. We want to mention to Chad Badoon that his honor, Judge Landis, is out here, as is Mrs. Landis, and many of the baseball owners throughout the American and National League. Charlie up for the old seventh inning stretch again, and here's Ford Barnes. Come in, Ford. Yes, Tom, all the magic for out and all the fans. The American League fans and the National League fans here in New York out to root and doing plenty of rooting and getting plenty to root about in this all-star game with the National Broadcasting Company bringing to you. First pass of seventh league, seventh uh, inning with the American League just retiring now to let the National League have come in for their half of it. They started off that time with Gary Jr. bat and went to three and two. And he smacked one up the right field side to second and was out to second. Off to Vaughn. Off swinging it down to Vaughn and a very close decision there. Gearinger was out. Harder then came up. The count went to one and two and he swung hard and two men were gone. Then Ben Chapman who replaced Dave Ruth in right field. Ben Chapman came up to bat. Leaned on that old apple hard and smashed the leather, leather way out to the bullpen in left field. 455 m- foot mark from the plate. Yes, sir, Lee, 455 foot mark out there for a three-bagger. He wheeled his way in the third and looks for a moment as if he wanted to try to suck it into a homer. Gary came up and went out on call strike. So we go into the National League top the seven, the American League leading nine to seven. Come in, Tom. Mike Turner, third baseman of the Pittsburgh Pirates, his first step of right hand hitter with Del Harder in the box for the American League, and Mickey Stockton behind the back. 
first pitch to my trainer is a call strike. Here we go. He swings at the foul, strike two. American League, infield, is Gehrig, Gallinger, Foreman, and Fox. In the outfield at the moment, Simmons in left, Averill in center, and Chaplin in left. The battery being Harder and Cochran. Strike two on the hitter, Trainer. Ball one. Fastball is low outside. Cochran doesn't throw that ball down toward third. Probably thought he had a corner, but the count is two and one. Strike two and ball one. Here it is. A tip foul gets away from Cochran and the count remains. Strike two and ball one. High trainer, first man up with the match of the league in the last half of the seventh inning. Here it is. As a high fly toward right field, it's foul. And the count remains two and one. That was a long smash that hit the barrier in front of the scoreboard in right field. Mike Rainer has a count of strike two and ball one, leading off for the National League in the last half of the seventh inning. The American League nine, the National League seven. The pitch, a ground ball down, short stop way. Keith Short, Brown has his tenth. He's out. A beautiful long throw from Keith Short by Joey Coleman. Gary stretching full length to snag that ball, and Trainer was out by a step. A pretty play by Joe Coleman. That was perhaps the outstanding infield play of the afternoon. Up to now, we say the outstanding outfield play was that catch of Mike Guy Carly early in the game. Chuck Bryan is up there. Chuck, you know, hits him from the port side. He swings and misses a skip foul with Cochran Hill. That was a very pretty picture to gaze upon. Chuck Bryan, in those takes a fine swing. Well, Third ball is low outside. Ball one and strike one. Ball one, strike one, the pitch. Ball two, which is too high. Last start of the seventh inning. One man is then retired. The American League nine, the National League seven. Here it is. The foul, strike two. Now down, Chuck Bryan is ball two, strike two. No luck, hanging around on plate. Ball two and strike two, one out, nobody on, last half of the seventh. No harder pitching, Cochran catching. As a lazy hopper down, first Gellig has it. Harder covers the line. Hard Gellig throws oh, just away from Harder and trying to escape. That's his error for Earl on the throw. Gellig is given a charge with the error. That was a lazy hopper down, first base play. Gehrig ran over to get the ball and crossing it underhand to Harder. Harder going at top speed. Gehrig just misjudged his distance a bit and threw to the right field side of first base. Harder had his fingertips on the ball but couldn't hold it. So of course Gehrig will be charged with an error. Something has happened down there to Joe Cronin. Charlie Gehrig is Joe Cronin and not by a Moriarty. Oh, Joe. Joe broke his belt down there, I believe. I don't blame him for breaking a belt on that last play. He'd probably break a belt to Spenders as well. That was a slow play. We had breakfast with Joe Cole this morning, and we told him he was eating too much. But well, anyway, Joe's ready to go, and we're ready to go with the last half of the seventh inning. One man out. Step plan is on first. No out is up. Score, 9-7. Anything can happen. And, believe me, the fans out here at the Polo Johnson, New York, are well aware of it. Bell Adams up there. Knocks the best off the shoes. Gets right in there, close to the plate. And we're ready to go. He swings. It's a high bounder down short. Homer, to carry her. 
the flying slides into Gallion and no further play could be made. Gallion finally caught the ball over to Johnny, but it was useless. That was one of those real high bombs. It sounded about 20 feet in the air. Tony came in fast, kicked it over to Gallion, getting struck flying on a fourth play at second, and then struck through hard into second base and upset Gallion a little bit, just enough to make it impossible for a play. Paul Wayne was the next hitter. Paul, you know, hits the left handed. Now he has two men out. Not out on first base. Paul won. Paul two. So far, Paul Wayne has pulled away from the plate, and the count is two and nothing. Last call to the seventh inning. Two out. Four out on first base. Here it is. Very high fly. Lee Carrig is coming in halfway between first and home. He's under it and has it, retiring the National Leaguers in the seventh inning. At the end of the stretch inning, the score, American League 9, the National League 7. This game coming from the Polo Grounds and is being sent to you by the National Broadcasting Company. Come in, for it. National League top the seven started off with Pat Trainer up to bat to face No Harder, the curveball artist. And Pat Trainer banged one out to deep short where Conan took, took it and shot it to Gehrig. And Trainer was out at first on a very, very close decision, but a beautiful play by Conan taking that ball and shooting it over to Gehrig. Then Klein came to bat. Chuck Klein, the heavy hitter of the Cubs, and banged one hard down to Gehrig. Harder ran over to cover first. Gehrig tossed it underhanded to Harder. It just hit the tips of his fingers and found it out, and Plan was safe on the error. Plan on first then with one out. Mellot coming up to bat, one on and one out. Mel smacked one down to Conan. Conan tossed to Gehringer, forcing out Plan. Gehringer shot it down to Gehrig, but up had beat the throw. So it was one on and two out. With Plainer at bat, Get a high fly with Gary came in and took retiring the side, and here we go into the American League top of the eighth. Here's Tom. Come in. Jimmy Fox, right hand hitter, is first up with Dizzy Dean in the box, Lopez behind the bat, and Fox takes a terrific cut at the first one and misses strike one. No changes as we start the eighth inning. Ball on a fastball is too high. Carries on first. Billy Herman on second. Long short. Trainer third. Ops in right field. Paul Wayne is in center, and Chuck Klein is in left. That's correct. There's a long drag, high into left field. Chuck Klein is coming in, and Vaughn going out, and nobody is able to get to it. And Fox pulls up at second. Chuck Klein was playing over in deep left center field that time for Jimmy Fox, and now he's looking up towards the sun, so evidently he lost the ball in the sun. Came over and tried to reach the ball with his outstretched left hand, but missed it by about a foot. It is just restored as a two-page block for Jimmy Fox. Al Simmons, another right-hand batter, is up next. Oh, reliable Al Simmons. Here it is. Ball one. First half of the eighth inning, you know nobody else. Fox on second. Ball two. Team fast ball. He's trying the outside corner on Al Simmons. Just barely missed with those two. That is the stretch. The pitch. The swing. It's a fly to stretch. Back and go. The stretch. The pitch. It's a fly to short left field. Vaughn going out fast. He's under it. And he makes a nice pass of it. Hockey Vaughn goes rather deep in the left field to make that catch. You know what Fox and Simmons at bat? Bill Terry, he's the manager today at least, has Chuck Klein play over in deep left center field. That was all oh, that was another hit for the American Leaguers. But Hockey Vaughn was able to travel back back to put the ball over his shoulder in short left field. One man out. Joe Cronin is up there. That's when he hits the first ball, a line splash into right center field. Paul Wayner goes 
goes over and makes the catch and whips it back into second base. It is taken there by Archie Brown, but Fox gets back safe. Bill Thorne fell to that ball right on the seam. Low line drive to Paul Wainer in right center. Mike Coughlin is coming up. Being announced over the loudspeaker as the manager of the Detroit Tigers, Mike Coughlin. Mike's doing a swell job over there, too. Two men out, you know. Fox is on second. Strike oh, called. Dizzy Dean, tall right-hander of the St. Louis Cardinals, is in the box. Foul! Al Shack comes over, retrieves the ball, and puts it back over to Lopez. Lopez to the umpire, we're ready to go. Right two on Mickey Chocolate. First half of the eighth inning, American League nine, National League seven. Two men out. Fox on second. Here it is. Ball one. The battery started to walk for the dugout. Strike two and ball one. The battery attempted to call up for quick goals. He wouldn't stand for it, however. Mickey Cockman is holding his thoughts down there by the knees on the inside of the plate, indicating that he thought it was low inside. Anyway, the count is strike two and ball one. First half of the evening, two men out. Dizzy Dean pitching and Lopez catching. Strike two, ball one. Dizzy Dean steps off the rubber. Fox goes back, touches second base. Dean then picks up the rosin bag and we're ready to go. Got a lot of canaries out here for the moment. Everybody whistling for some unknown reason. Well, they're all mocking Al Shack. Ball two inside. Al Shack, you know, 50% of that great comedy team of Al Shack and Shack. Oh, Al starts to whistle. Everybody seems to follow suit. Strike two, ball two. Our Mikey Cochran, the pitch. It's a ground ball, a lazy grounder down second. Cochran is in fast and close. A beautiful play, and Cochran is out at first, retiring the American Leaguers in the first half of the eighth inning. Come in for it. Well, it's now about 10 minutes past 4 o'clock, and this baseball game started at 1.30 Eastern Daylight Saving Time. And for the two hours and 40 minutes, it's been transpiring here in the polo ground between... The American League All-Stars and the National League All-Stars and presented to you by the National Broadcasting Company. From the polo ground here in New York where we've just finished the first half of the eighth inning. The American League at bat, Fox came up and banged a high fly into left field and Chuck Klein, who's been playing way out deep in left center, ran hard and fast but couldn't quite get to it and went for a two-base hit for Fox. Simmons came up. Simmons came up and Vaughn backed out into left field and took the, a fly from Simmons almost in the same place on which Fox had gotten two bases. Then Corn came up the bat with one on and one out, lined one hard into center field. Paul Wainer moved over very fast and speared it just as it threatened to go by him. So there were two men down and still one on. Cochran came up. Cochran banged a slow one just right down about 20 feet off second base. Herman came in fast, scooped it up on the fly, turned and wheeled it over to Terry, retiring the American League in the eighth. The score is American League nine, the National League seven, as we go into the National League half of the eighth inning with Bill Terry just coming up to bat. All right, Tom Manning, come in. The American League is better, you know, as we go into the last half of the eighth inning. Mel Arder, the Cedar Indians, is in the box. Mickey Cochran of the Detroit Tigers, the catcher and manager, is behind the bat. Infield is the same, Fox is at third, Colton at short, Geringer at second, and Gary at first. The outfield is Chapman in right, Averill center, Simmons in left. We're ready to go with Terry, left-handed interrupt. Pulls his back down and hits the punt, but pulls it back, and it's declared a strike. Harder's third ball, catching the outside corner of the plate. Memphisville is up there, and here's the pitch. That's the ball. Another curve ball. 
Counter on Terry's feet, and the count is ball one and strike one. It's the last half of the eighth inning. The National League is two runs behind, nine to seven. Here it is. A ground ball to the box. Cohen over near the track takes it. Boom! He does. Another pretty play by Joe Coleman. That was a foul to the front pass. Bell Harder and Coleman dashed over close to second base pushing, picked it up, and went out of position, whipped it over to Gary, and Terry was out on a fast play. Yep. Nobody on. He's gone. Nobody on. Hockey Bowen, left hand hitter. All the Pittsburgh Pirates is up. Hit the first ball, pitch down, short. Foreman comes up with it. The throw is wide, but Terry reaches over, drags the ball, and he is out. Gehrig is getting a nice uh, round of applause for that dash over first base. That was a scorching ground ball, and Joe Foreman has to go to his left a little bit for it, and picks it up and has to pass fast to get more. Foreman goes down to first base like nobody's business. But it was a slow play. Two outs, nobody on. Lopez is up. Hits the first ball, takes the long drive, close to the foul line, into the stands, but it's foul. That ball hit the stands out in right field. That was foul by about a yard and a half. Strike one, Lopez has round at first base and was on his way to second. Watch the camp run on foul ball. These umpires are right on their toes this afternoon. They've had some pretty hairline decisions to make, particularly George Moriarty. George is over here at third and had a couple of close ones earlier in the game. Now he's over there at second and he's had a couple of plenty close ones out there at second. The boys apparently are all satisfied with these umpires. Boys in blue this afternoon are doing a sweet job out here. Lopez is back to the plate. He hits the next one. A high, lazy bounder down third. Pops to Gary. Lopez is out. That's the end of the eighth inning. No runs, no hits, and no errors. At the end of eight innings, the score of the American League, nine, the National League, seven. This game coming to you from the Polo Grounds of New York City is being presented by the National Broadcasting Company. Come in for it. Well, the junior circuit certainly made short work of the elder league in the eighth inning here. The National League came up with Bill Terry at bat, and he banged out one of his usual hard ones down to short, and Joe Cronin took it on the run, got it over to Gehrig, and he was out. A sweet start stopped this man Cronin. Then Vaughn came to bat, and Vaughn got up, cluster down to deep short. Cronin got it right down between his ankles, picked it up through the first, and Gehrig then drew a terrific round of applause by keeping his left foot on the bag, standing out. He looked like almost two yards and winging that ball at wide throw from Cronin, retiring Vaughn. And the crowd did show their appreciation of Lou Gehrig as they usually do. There's not much get past Lou at first if it's within shooting distance of Lou's glove. Then Lopez came to bat. Lopez banged one hard down between the shortstop and third. Third base, about... 18, or at least 6 to 8 yards. But Fox went over fast, took it, shot it across on that long peg from third to first, retiring Lopez. So they went down in one, two, three order. Terry, Vaughn, and Lopez in the National League half of the eighth inning. We're moving now into the ninth, the ninth inning of this All-Star game with the American League coming to bat leading by two runs. They scored two runs in the fourth, six in the fifth, and one in the sixth. For a total of nine, while the National League scored one tally in the first inning, three in the third, and three in the fifth. The trail now by seven. Nine to seven is the score, with the American League coming up to bat here in the ninth inning. Here's Tom Manning to give it to you. Come in, Tom. One of the fine things of this ball game is that practically everybody out here has gotten into the ball game as expected to on the side of the National League particularly. So far... Uh, Rick Farrell, Jimmy Dyke, Frank Higgins, and uh, West haven't broken into the lineup of the American League. All of the pitchers, practically all of the catchers, outfielders and infielders of the National League have had their turn now. Ready to go in the first half of the ninth inning. 
Earl Averill of the Cleveland Indians, the left-hand batter is first up, and Frank House. Frank House of the Boston Braves, the middle right-hander, is on the mound for the National League. That seems to be the only change in the lineup as we play the ninth inning. National League is in field of Curry, Herman, Vaughn, and Trainer. Lopez got the Averill hits the next one. It's a little pop fly to left field. Looks like a base hit. Vaughn going back. Oh, what a catch! What a catch! What a catch! What a catch. What a catch. What a catch. Hey, look for that applause. There you are, radio fans. Absolutely the outstanding fielding play of this afternoon's game insofar as we are concerned, and I think that we'll have plenty to agree with it. Hockey ball on the little shortstop of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Stuck his position on that drooping uh, liner, a bit of a Texas speaker by Earl Averill, and went out and took that ball way out at the edge of the uh, pavilion in the left field corner, right at the very fingertip. He kept right on going and ran until he ran into the barrier in the left field corner. That was a sweet catch by Archie Vaughn. Well, with ball players like this on a diamond, anything can happen. What out? Charlie Gehringer is up. And the count is ball two. Frank out for the Boston Braves is pitching. Ball three, another one low outside. Three and nothing on Charlie Gehringer. Is being attracted for a moment, a great red silver plane flying over the polo ground. Carrying a walk. Carrying a walk on four straight. It's the nice inning, it'll run out. Mel Harder is going up to hit. Harder's getting a nice round of applause from the fans here. Mel Hardy, you know, bats from right handed Sense the sacrifice, it's a punch down first base way, and it's foul. National League has picked the ball up. Bill Terry picks it up and says, come on, fellas, up on your toes and puts it around. Now Frank Hall has it again, and Harder is back in the box with a count strike one. Charlie Carringer has been on that base a lot this afternoon. Harder again attempts to put it to pop fly, and Lopez is under it and takes it. That ball was only about two or three feet over his head, and about eight or ten feet toward first base. Lopez ripped off his mask, was under it. Charlie Carringer, however, was close to first base and got back safely. Now we have two men out. Penny Chapman is up. Last time up, Benny Chapman smacked one out to left center field, 455 feet away. There's a pitch out. Lopez calling for a pitch out, hoping to lift carrying her off first. Ball one. Ninth inning, Chapman is up 9-7 in the American League. It's passed over to first, no go. Benny Chapman, you know, hits him right-handed. A foul ball. Down the third baseline, and the count on Chapman is ball one and strike one. Blue Gehrig is up next. Here it is. Ball two, a fast ball is high outside, and the count is ball two and strike one. Here it is. Long fly out to left field. Fine coming in. He stumbled but made the catch for the third out. That line was playing very, very deep out there again. Had to come in for that ball and over to his right. Over toward the far line but made a nice running catch. Retiring the American Leaguers in the ninth inning. So the National Leaguers come to bat two runs behind in the ninth inning. Come in for it go into the last half of the ninth with the National League trailing by two runs. The American League half of the ninth started off with Frank House coming into the bat to pitch for the Nationals. Averill was the first man to face him. Averill smacked a fly out 
Right on the left field foul line, just a couple of feet in. And Vaughn brought the crowd to their feet for the, a great play, a great, beautiful catch. Running out there, going back to his position short, and making an absolutely terrific sparkling catch. There's almost no adjective that you can apply to that that would be too great or too superlative to describe Vaughn's great catch of Averill's fly out on the left field foul line. Geringer that came up and then got four straight and walked. So there's one on base and one out with Mel Harder came up. Mel Harder came up and tried to bunt, banged it down the first baseline and rolled foul. So he came back to the base up his bat, and again tried to pop it up just a few feet away from the home plate. Lopez ripped off his mask, ran out there under it, and took it for a nice catch, making two men gone in the American League half of the night. Chapman, then Ben Chapman came up, always a very dangerous man batting order. Keith McAfly in the left field, Klein, Chuck Klein came in very fast, stumbled, given bringing the hearts of the fans in the mouth right before he took it, but did take it, retiring the Americans to the ninth, and here we go into the National League after the ninth, failing by two runs. The Americans, nine, the National, seven. Come in, Tom, man. Frank Hulls, the left and right hand of his up, Eddie. Plays down a beautiful punch, Cox is out there, goes! He's out! He's out! Why not go in the foot? Look for the fans, some of them are howling there, that was close. They're giving Cox on the right hand on that play. Frank Hulls dropped that foot, dropped that foot, perfect, and rolled about ten feet up for the pitch. Cockrell ripped that mask off, was out and picked that ball up and ripped it over to Gary. And Frank House for a pitcher was pretty fast in getting down there. Boy, that was close and a swell play to watch. One out. Willie Herman is up. Willie and O hit some right handed. Harder is pitching. Cockrell catching. Foul back. Strike one. Billy Herman, who's playing second base, is up. Ninth inning, one man out. Bell Harder is pitching. Mickey Cochran behind the bat. The infield, Gary first, Garinger second, Coleman short, and Fox third. Here's the pitch. The ground ball just inside the third base back on the left field corner. It's a base knock. The ball pans off the wall. Simmons has it, puts it into Garinger. He flies. He's safe. A double. Little Willie Herman, Mike Dutton, right on the old label. Well, it's still a ball game. One man out of the ninth inning. Two runs behind. Willie Herman is on second base. That was a peak of a hit. The ball struck just about one foot inside the bag with Jimmy Fox leaping for it. But of course, he had both chance just go over to get it. High trainer. Manager in third base for the Pittsburgh Pirates is up. Ball one. The fastball is high inside. The American League battery since the fifth inning is Mel Harder, Mickey Cochran. As a long drive up in the stands, but it's foul. Ball one and strike one. Was a smash up in the right field stand. This by trainer, you know, is quite a ball player. Yes, indeed. He's a right hand hitter, and the count ball one, strike one. The pitch. Ball two. Harder's hook ball. Missed the outside corner, and the count on by trainer. Ball two, and the strike one. Willie Herman, you know, is on second base. One man out of the ninth inning, two runs behind. Harder, pitch, here it is. It's a strike call. That ball got away from Cochran, rolled about four feet away, and now the count on Pi Trainer is ball two and strike two. on Pye Trainer and gets him right-handed, you know. Here it is. He swings, and it's a drive to the outfield. Averill under it and takes it for the crest. There's a change out there in the outfield, but it's not been announced. 
West is playing center field for the American League as the West made that catch. Hope you'll pardon me for that delay. We knew it wasn't Averill coming in, and that change in center field in the ninth inning was not announced. West of the St. Louis Browns is playing center field for the American League. West made that catch, making it two out of the ninth inning. Runner on second base. And Chuck Bryan of the Chicago Cubs, the left-hand batter, is coming up straight round swinging. Ninth inning, you know, two men out. Billy Herman is on second base. The score, American League 9, National League 7. This boy Harder picks a lot of baseball, since placing roughing in the fifth inning. Strike one on the hitter. Strike two, he swings and misses. That's all. That ball was down around the knees. Chuck Bryan taking a long follow through swing. And now the count is strike two. That ball was down around the knees. Chuck Bryan taking a long follow through swing. And now the count is strike two. Ninth inning, nine to seven in favor of the American League. Two men out. Willie Herman on second. Chuck Bryan, a mighty hitter, is up. Back to right field, but it's fouled into the stands. That ball is what we call a hook in golf. Started out there towards Derrick and then curved right over into the stands. Strike two. Last half of the ninth inning, you know, the National League is two runs behind and they have one run on the bag. Billy Herman at second base. And Chuck Bryan on his long distance hitter at the plate. Now Harder is pitching, Cochran is catching. It's stretch. And here it is. It's a ball. A fastball is high outside. And the count is strike two and ball one. Not a single fan has left this ballpark unless it was a doctor or something this afternoon. Because anything can happen at any time. Any kind of a smash ball is tied up, you know. Strike two, ball one, the pitch. As it drives down for a safe way, Terry fumbles the ball, crosses it to Harder. He is out of the close play, and the ball game is over in favor of the American League by a score of 9-7. to seven. This is Tom Manning saying good afternoon from the Polar Browns in New York, and here is Graham McAmey. Come in, Graham. Thanks, Tom. There are so many features in this ball game that we won't try to go into them at all. We'll, it's been uh, pretty, almost three hours, three-hour ball game up to about one minute. The outstanding features in my mind now, just as I look back over the game, were the pitching for the first three innings of that mighty pitcher, Carl Hubble. He, he was gorgeous out there in the box, and the fielding stunt of Archie Vaughn of Pittsburgh. Those stand, those stand out in my mind. Uh, uh, besides some of the hitting, of course. I'll tell you who did the hitting, and then the hitting, and then we'll quit. Uh, for the American League men, Carringer got two singles. Dickey got a single. Simmons got a two doubles and a single. Cronin, a single and a double. Averill, a triple and a double. Fox, a single and a double. And Ruffing, a single. Chapman, a triple. Of course, they were, they, there was only a couple of them in the game all the time. They might have, some of them might have done more. For the National League, Frisch. Frankie Frisch got a homer on the first ball pitch. Off lefty Gomez. Gomez didn't go so well today as he has been going through his American League team. Frisch got a homer and a single. Uh, Cat Trainer of Pittsburgh got a two singles. Nedwick got a beautiful long home run up into the second tier of the stands in left field. Trainer got a single, Trian a single, and Billy Herman, who came into the game late, got a double. Those are the outstanding features of the game this afternoon. The other, only other great outstanding feature was the tremendous length of the game. Past three hours of baseball, and it was all fans here this afternoon. But it was a great game. The Americans have won again, as they did last year. Last year it was four to two. Today it was nine to seven in favor of the American League over the Nationals in the All-Star Game played at the Polo Grounds in New York City. Uh, it's time to go now. The crowd is thrown out on the field. All get, get into the exit, and so will we. Uh, this is Graham Ackerman speaking, and we'll leave you now, and just by telling you that uh, the report of this game has been given to you by Tom Manning on the play-by-play, and Paul Don between innings, and I've had the pleasure of being here too, and uh, through the facilities of the National Broadcasting Company. Goodbye. We wish to thank.
thank the makers of Ambrosia for relinquishing their broadcast period this afternoon in order that you might hear in its entirety the program just concluded. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that piece of baseball history. An amazing all-star game with amazing performances, and the American League comes out on top 9-7, to seven, and you wouldn't have thought that from the start of the game as Hubble handcuffed the American League batters. Now, to answer that trivia question, this player was voted to the All-Star Game 20 times, and he appeared as a pinch hitter a record 10 times. Who am I? Mickey Mantle. If you're hungry for more, there are thousands of stories on thisdayinbaseball.com. Don't forget to ring the bell to get all of our updates, and we do appreciate thumbs up or any other feedback you might have. And if you know of any other baseball fans who'd like to hear about these stories, please share our videos with them, and we'll see you on the next Rewind.